Hi, good evening uh, or good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the Village of Mamaric Board of Trustees work session. We are starting early. We're going to get an update on the budget from the village manager. And then we're gonna talk about priorities of uh, the board for the budget in the coming year. Uh, I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Uh, Mr. Barbario, would you like to start the parade? Yeah. Um, thank you, Mayor. I prepared something. Uh, let me just silence my three phones. Uh, <clears throat> so um, as, as, uh, as everyone knows on this Zoom regarding staff and the Board of Trustees, tonight's meeting was requested by several members as a um, big picture meeting to kick off the, the budget season. Um, we have been working on the budget internally um, with staff and department heads for some time now, actually right after the beginning of, of the year. Um, and I'm happy to report that staff and department heads have completed um, the draft budget uh, for the 2022-2023 budget season. Uh, in fact, we're ready to present uh, on March 18th, um, probably the best budget that the Board of Trustees has seen in recent years. And, and I wanna explain a little bit as to why, um, but I need to go back a little bit. Uh, the challenges we faced during the last um, two years um, with the pandemic, I hope it is a once in a lifetime challenge for us in municipal government. Uh, we've had to enact workplace changes. We had to make uh, adjustments to keep staff safe while the essential and non-essential uh, services were maintained at the same level as best we could. And on top of that, um, climate change and mother nature threw two significant additional disasters our way, um, tropical storm Isaias and hurricane Ida, um, which created in my opinion, probably the perfect scenario uh, of um, challenges that required leadership and staff to work harder than, than we ever have before. However, from that challenge, we learned how to become more efficient. Um, we've accepted double and sometimes triple our responsibilities and became a more cohesive management team with our eye on, on one goal, to provide safe and the best services we could for the residents of the community. Um, financially, we are on a significant high. Uh, in fact, we've added 2.7 million to the surplus uh, from last year. Um, the auditor's next meeting um, will tell us that. Um, not only is our budget um, presentation gonna give the board approximately $550,000, uh, which is what we are under the cap I just to introduce new quality of life improvements but we're also adding back many uh, important items. Augie, I have a little PowerPoint I want to share. Am I good? Um, let me try it. See if let it me make up. you the most. I just click on it. I don't know Can you see that? that? Yes. Yeah. See. It. Okay. Good. So you reset it. Let's you go with the slideshow. All right. So, so this is tonight's big picture discussion, or at least kicking off the big picture discussion. Um, in our budget, which has, as I said, $550,000 of flex under the cap, we are adding back a village engineer and increasing the staff with an assistant village engineer to help us manage the Army Corps project and the almost $6 million in grants that we received in the last few months. Uh, I have been managing, as everyone knows, uh, the sewer project with the help of um, Mark Ferraro, James um, Barney, and Mike Inarelli. Um, and we're doing uh, a great job with that. But now with the Army Corps project and with all of the other um, money that we're receiving as far as grant money, we need, uh, we need help. And so this budget includes a village engineer and an assistant village engineer. It also returns a full-time director of planning to help manage the workload in that office and to assist the board of trustees so that the board of trustees can call upon 
a planner um, instead of um, using a consulting planner, which is uh, a significant cost. We're bringing back an assistant building inspector to the building department. Um, we had downsized to a part-time assistant building inspector during the pandemic, but um, we're bringing that back in this budget to a full-time position. We're adding a part-timer to the two-person HR department. HR has done an incredible job um, with, uh, with the department head, Danielle Gilliard, and the senior clerk there, Marie DeFury, but the work um, that's required uh, needs, they need additional staff. And so we're putting in a part-timer. We also created, which was a discussion I had many months ago with the board, a dedicated Village of Maranek emergency management team, which is comprised of, of mostly staff and a few volunteers. I will require monthly training. Of course, I'll take the monthly training with them to handle all disaster situations that the climate change uh, presents or throws at us, um, but also it's um, a group team effort of training together during, um, during the entire year so that we're always ready uh, and available for um, the next Ida, which I hope never comes. Our budget also includes $22,000 in new police reform and reinvention initiatives, such as training and community connection platform. We have absorbed in this budget a 13% increase in health costs, which is not in our control. We have increased road salt by 25% because road salt has gone up. We've also increased our trash tipping fees by 15%, all included in this budget. This is not to come in the future. This is already put in, in place. We also had a 33% combined increase in workman's comp and flood general liability insurance for, for obvious reasons. They really, um, they really hit us pretty hard with that. Um, we're budgeting for increased training and contract services for our finance department. Our workman's comp uh, 207C consulting and guidance is included in the budget. Um, the fire chief, to his credit, has added more fire response and protective equipment, as well as radios. We have a 40% increase for park maintenance equipment, but only for electric mowers and power tools. Um, a 13%, oh, I'm sorry, that's just from the, from, uh, the previous page. We have expanded our summer, day pro summer camp program to include more people. Um, and we are returning the 50% discount for the, um, the staff, uh, employees of the village, as well as the volunteers. Um, our spray ground will be open the entire summer season, not just on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. We have increased our marine education programs by 30%, and we're adding uh, improvements to our docks, which everyone knows, um, but some of those costs are included in the general budget. All of that, and we're still under the cap by $546,543. That's my big picture. That's what the staff has been doing for the past few months because things are turning around and projections such as sales tax are going to continue to improve. In fact, I think we're conservative on the projection for sales tax. So on, uh, forgive me, I think it's March 30th is when we have our first budget discussion and our budget looks fantastic this year. This is That's all I have, Mayor. Okay, Jerry, Jerry, so the main driver of this uh, generous budget that keeps taxes stable is, is, is sales tax revenue? Sales tax revenue helps. The other thing that helps is that we had a 24% decrease in pension costs because our controller really knows what they're doing um, or that staff knows what they're doing. Um, we've had also... Um, other increases such as we know from the information we got from MTA and the information uh, that we're getting almost every day now that people are gonna be required to return to work. And so that means that they're gonna to have to drive their car to our parking lots, get our parking permits. Um, 
other things that are in the budget. I didn't go into detail um, because I didn't want this to be a full blown budget meeting, but this is the big picture presentation that we can offer you um, in under 15 minutes. That is a, a nice picture. I think that's the best picture I've had since I've been an elected official. Uh, does anybody? Oh, uh, just one thing, uh, John from uh, Zen City. Okay, yeah, thanks. Yes. Yeah, just uh, we're, we'll get to you later. This is a uh, uh, first yeah. Uh, yeah, come back after five. Okay, perfect. I thought uh, excellent. Have a good, have a good uh, meeting. See you soon. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Enjoy yourself. Uh, before I get started, does anybody in the board of trustees have any initiatives or uh, things they want to see put in the budget or taken out of the budget? Uh, Mr. Young, I'll, I'll wait. Yeah, there. Um, in talking with the staff earlier, I, I, I uh, I've been told that there was a um, a river maintenance fund at some point uh, uh, that was done away with. Um, uh, seemed to be a very poor. Well, whatever. I, I think we should get back to that, and we should start uh, cleaning, uh, cleaning, and uh, uh, and lowering that river on our own, and not wait for the. Uh, Army to do it. Uh, Army Corps to do it for us. We should be getting ready to to uh, to to manage what they what they do. And we're going. It's going to cost us money, but we should do it. I mean that that those rivers are in terrible shape. They're too shallow. They got they're clogged with with debris and uh, and uh, well, whatever. I, that's what I'd like to see. Whatever money we pull out, I'd like to put it aside for that. Okay. Uh, that, that's that's what I did. We, we could discuss that uh, when we get to the budget hearings. Uh, can, or you, can we look at what that number used to be and where it was? Right now? No, no, no. Yeah. absolutely. Right. I can yeah. get it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, anybody else besides me? I mean, go ahead, Dan. No, go ahead, there. There. Um, Yeah, I actually, uh, it, I don't think it was a, a, a fund. I think it was like a budget item and that it got pulled out. And I think that that's in the short term, not a smart thing to have done. And um, I also think that there's a lot of stuff adjacent to the river that's still there from on private property that's still that flooded during Ida that hasn't been removed. So there are junk cars, there's still junk in the river. And that I think we should think about seeing if we can remove it unless it's too, I mean, we have to remove it, but whether it's something that can be captured in some of the funds we're recapturing from Ida because it's it's yeah. there are people with who've got stuff that's flooded on private property that are just junk cars waiting so, for the next flood. So Nora, this is FEMA's rule. Um, if they put it to the right of way, or if it's in the right of way, we can remove it. Mm -hmm. They won't pay for anything that's on private property. Okay. So if anyone has material like that and they get somehow to move it to the right of way, we are forced to take it away and. FEMA will uh, reimburse us for it. Are we allowed, I mean- are, do You're not we, allowed to go on private property. That's the problem. Do we have any um, ability to um, okay. prevent or to require people to get rid of essentially abandoned vehicles on private property that's, that's you know, within, I mean, 50 or 100 feet of the river? Uh, yeah. I don't know. If, I don't know if we specifically have that. Dan, do you know if we have that? Well, I mean, we, have, we have the property maintenance code. Um, and I think there are things, I think you, uh, there's something about having an unregistered vehicle on Correct. private property. I, it's been a while since I've uh, looked at that. But as far as the uh, funding that uh, Trustee Young mentioned, I my recollection is that it was $110,000 split between two items. I think it was $55,000 for, um, uh, we would call re, uh, bank casting, not dredging, because that's a that's a dirty word for certain people. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think it was another fifty five thousand for uh, catch basin cleaning. And now we have the we can do that in house. But uh, it, I believe it was I believe it was one hundred ten thousand dollars. But Augie can confirm that uh, tomorrow. Uh, Trustee Natchez, how does that? Yeah, um, Jerry, it's very, uh, very interesting um, presentation. Um, I would have loved to have it beforehand, but 
some of the things that came up uh, is in terms of the different positions you're bringing back or adding. And um, we had asked for some uh, a cost analysis versus what we were doing versus if we brought uh, personnel in. So when we get to that, it would be helpful to have that analysis. Kind of cost analysis as far as uh, compared to the consultants? Yes. Okay, yeah, sure. You know, I mean, that's, that's what we asked for. Uh, it would be helpful to put it in uh, perspective, uh, you know, uh, what we were paying, you know, what would, it, you know, what, how much of that would not uh, reoccur if we had a full-time, uh, you know, planner, funds, et cetera. Uh, sure. uh, full, the full-time village attorney, um, I believe should be in the budget uh, and um, as opposed to how we are today. Um, what number would that be? Uh, it just as a point, just as a point of information. What the hell's going on? The full time yeah, real attorney is in the budget. If it is, it wasn't. It was not. We put it in. We put it in the budget last year. Uh, okay, let me ask you: Is that in the budget? Is that in your proposed budget, Jerry? Uh, you got to give me some time to look it up because we have a payment for the village attorney, which would be reduced if there was a full time. Uh, but while he's looking, uh, that that's when you get the information, let us know. But I know we did put it in last year. Uh, I don't know if it survived. Uh, Tom? Yeah. I have one more comment. Go ahead, Nora. So, um, I'm, and it's great that we've gotten all of these grants, um, but I'm wondering if it might be uh, more prudent to hire um, an interim project manager so that we're not, you know, adding staff that we might not need after these grants are completed, whether we could do it on a project management basis so we're not, you know, putting in a situation where we are hiring more staff and having you know more benefits and more health and more that for 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 projects that might not be long term just think i just you know like evaluate okay. the two I, of them. I, I, I hear what you're saying but i, I think what we, we also should look at is if other communities our size uh how do they handle engineering how do they handle planning uh because i i, I think that you know a, a community of twenty thousand people to not have uh, a resident engineer it might not be the best uh, course, but I see what you're saying. But that, yeah. I, I also want that to be part of project analysis too. Yeah, I think and, it should be because if it's not somebody we're going to need for more than two or three years, maybe we don't want to have create a position and then eliminate a position versus having someone who just does it on a project basis. All right, so, that's a point of discussion in. Uh, for Trustee Natchez, we took out 165,000 for full-time village engineer, and we added 165,000 to retainer agreement village attorney. So there's 165,000. Doesn't matter what line it's in; it's in the budget. Okay. Uh, so I have a question. Go ahead. Lou. So, so if, if that 165, that means if we get an, an attorney, we don't get an engineer. No, no. Okay. 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 Great. I just no, want to mute you. Excuse me. Amen, sir. There are things that I would like to see added to the budget, and I'll, I'll talk about my reasoning. Uh, we give out camp scholarships every year. Cost the camp. We did. We canceled our camp scholarships. We didn't give them out. The cost of camp has gone up. Uh, although we have a, an affordable camp. We, we have a population uh, where a lot of children live below the poverty line. And uh, even though it seems like a bargain to some of us that are better healed, uh, I know of a lot of parents who can't afford to send two kids to camp, uh, let alone, you know, three. <clears throat> so I'd like to see the camp scholarship program at least triple. I think it was around $7,500, $8,000. I mean, I'd like to see that go to like $25,000. That will have a direct impact on children in this community uh, who really need a hand. And parents, 
uh, who you know, need a place for their children that's safe and fun uh, for the summer. You know, we have kids going back to school that sat in apartments all summer. And uh, we're lucky to get out one or two times to something special. And, you know, they're, they're with their classmates, some of whom, uh, you know, spent the summer in the Hamptons. Uh, it, it makes for a very hard conversation come September. Uh, and I think that, that that's uh, the least you could offer a kid is a little bit of fun during the summer. So that's one thing I'd like to talk about during budget time is vastly increasing that uh, to serve those that really need a break in this community. I have 8,000 in scholarships that we do. It's 8,000? Okay, I, I forgot whether it was 7,500 or 8,000. So I'd, I'd like to see the number. Sure. What did you say? I wasn't listening. What do you want to bring it to? 25 grand. 25. Okay. Uh, and the other thing is trees. We have a tree budget. Uh, I'd like to at least double the tree budget. You know, we have the money. If we don't do it now, it's never going to get done. And you're all smart people. Uh, you're all uh, well-read people. You know what's going on in the world. Uh, you know, this is the least we could do to try and stem the effects of global warming. And it will also help with the flooding in this community. And it also helps with the aesthetics of the community and the livability of the community. So I'd like to see that at least doubled. What's our tree budget now, Terry? 30, and then we added 42,000 for large tree pruning uh, street trees. I'm just talking about buying trees. 30. Yeah, so I'd like to see that go to like 60, because the price of trees has gone up too. I, I can say, I, I can say um, without conferring with the tree committee to whom I am liaison, that that would be very well accepted by the tree committee. Um, if it makes I, them happy, I'm happy. They have, yeah, but they have, they have broached an idea, <clears throat> and I think it's it's a it's a good idea, but it, to try and um, create a nursery in the village where seedlings are planted to get big enough <laughs> to offset the cost of purchasing trees. And it's something, it's, it's something that they're exploring. And, um, you know, I don't know if it's, no one knows whether it's feasible or not now, but the idea would be um, there would be a piece of property in the village that seedlings could be planted on. They would rely on the use of volunteers to try and water maintain. And they'd get to a point where instead of having to buy expensive trees, we'd be able to transplant those. Don't know okay. if that's even feasible, but that's something that they're considering. And I also think the pruning is something we've been deficient in. And that is one of the reasons we may have lost more trees. So, you know, it's, it's, it, it, as important as it is to plant trees, it's also important to maintain the trees that we have. And we have not been great at doing that. Three to five year trees we can maintain. It's the large trees that we just don't have the equipment and yeah. the coverage and, and the, um, the skill. I, I, I actually wasn't done. Uh, I'd also like to see more money put into walking safety improvements. Uh, we could talk about how that would manifest itself. Uh, but you know, I, I, I've seen a lot of different communities have different machinations of signs and both for speeding and for stop signs to make the stop signs more uh, prevalent and more noticeable, especially at night. Uh, and I'd like to talk to you know the traffic consultant about, you know, increasing that and how we if we spent the money what would be the best way to spend it uh you know we all we we, we all had an email this morning uh about a harrowing experience one of our residents had uh walking her child uh to school uh and you know we, we we've had fatalities in the village uh recently the, the gentleman on the marinick avenue was killed over the summer uh so it, I think it behooves us to do everything we can uh, to make this as safe as we can make it. And, you know, there's money to do it. We have money. We have a growing uh, fund balance. We have almost a zero tax increase. You know, if we don't keep residents safe, you know, th then that's, th that's going to be on us when, God forbid, someday somebody has a, a more serious accident with a child or... You, know, you, you, you all know where I'm going with this, and I, I don't want to jinx us. Can, so, I, can I ask a, a question or two about that? 
Uh, are you talking about, <clears throat> I know you're talking about the walking safety surveys and, and yeah. uh, that we've created, but adding money for a traffic consultant under contract services is easy. We can do that now in this budget because there's so much flex, but some of those improvements can cost just like Fenimore and Prospect's going to cost between eighty-eight and a hundred thousand dollars. So, are you saying to absorb those costs in no. this general? Or no, 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 no. That's not what I was saying. I wasn't talking about capital projects. Okay. Uh, I wasn't talking about like the sidewalk that needs to be put on uh, Old Post Road. I wasn't talking about okay. that. I okay. was talking about, uh, and, and I'll get into it more uh, at another time, but. You know, the, a lot of communities have now, you know, we have the big speed uh, mobility uh, trailers and, and they're yeah. great and they serve a real purpose. But a lot of communities now have the, the little square ones that get mounted on a pole mm -hmm. and they're ubiquitous in some of these communities. And, you know, it, it tells you your speed and it says, hey, slow, you know, it, it gives you like a real time message. And, and it says, slow down, yeah. Hey, slow down. Or, oh, you're under the speed limit. You're doing great. And okay. it's, it's it's really uh, the technology has really took a big jump in the next few years. Yep. And there, are, I've seen these stop signs that at night have a ring of light around them, and the you know, they're on a battery that's solar powered, and they have a ring of light around them so that you see the stop sign from you know an extra hundred yards away before you get there, and it, there's no saying you didn't see the stop sign. So just things like, and I'm not just saying that in, in and of itself. I mean, I'd like to talk to the consultant to get his advice on, you know, what is the most effective and efficient way of doing that. Okay. But those are just some of the ideas I'm throwing out that, you know, to make this community safer. I think the concept is good, you know, a good concept. Um, uh, um, I, I think we also, I mean, we've talked about lots of pro capital improvement projects, but we don't seem to be moving very fast on them. Uh, Old Post Road is a sidewalk is a good example. Uh, and we're not coordinated uh, because <clears throat> part of it was supposed to be, uh, include the McDonald's property, which just went through a site approval, but the request for having a sidewalk there somehow or other disappeared. Mm -hmm. So we better coordinated in in that and i think part of the, my concern would be the emphasis of undertaking the, the projects which are really costly um in trying to move them forward uh as a you know a very significant priority so so i i think that demonstrates the deficiency that we have as a, uh, without a director of planning as well as a village engineer and i know that um some board members are concerned about adding staff, but we're not adding staff. We're returning staff to what it was in the past mm -hmm. before we had to gut the budget because we had this once in a lifetime pandemic coming our way. And I think that kind of coordination, uh, Dan, Dan Sarnoff and I can't handle that from in our office because we have so much, so many other things going on. But cool. if, that, if that was a village engineer and a director of planning, focused on that, that would have easily, that would have easily um, been taken care of. And I'm sorry that I didn't even know that it was dropped uh, in that because now it's, you know, it's, it's probably a difficult uh, uh, position. To, to, Mr. to the trustee Natchez's point, I just want to, Dan, I think you're right. I think those are important, the, the capital projects that you talked about. Yeah. Uh, but the stuff I'm talking about in the budget is not a capital project. It, it is more hardware uh, to be installed uh, in, in the village. Uh, and just, Jerry, as, as when do we think that the prospect and uh, Fenimore project is going to start? We can get, as soon as we find out what the schedule is, um, when we have um, the, um, um, the contractors from, from Scarsdale, as soon as we see what their schedule is, we'll be, we'll be able to get them there. Um, because we're doing the piggyback, right, Dan? We're doing that piggyback. That, that's our goal. Um, but as far as the the actual specs, the we um, they're being prepared by ACARF. We reviewed them as a staff, 
I want to say, was it the week before last, Jerry? Yeah, it was two weeks uh, ago now. Yeah, it was uh, myself, Jerry, police, fire department. Uh, I think uh, I can't recall if you were there, Mayor, but uh, uh, we've gotten our comments to AKRF and they're finalizing the uh, specs on that. And just as a total aside, uh, a lot of the projects that we've had them working on as far as um, uh, conceptual plans for sidewalks in various locations, I did ask for uh, uh, capital uh, budget estimates so I can present that to the board uh, with the uh, uh, with the capital budget. And I actually just sent an email uh, to the mayor and I copied Jerry about uh, uh, some questions on hardware recommendations that I had asked for at the uh, beginning of February. So uh, you, you read my mind. Jerry, in, you know, in terms of the number of people that we are, quote, bringing back, what would be helpful to have an analysis of what the is uh, that you're proposing in terms of its dollars, how much is being increased in terms of bringing back or adding additional staff, uh, what the major differences are and how it's been made, being made up. Uh, okay. So we have a, a real feel of the numbers and whether, you know, whether these are one-time approaches or continual approaches, uh, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but obviously you've done some thinking about that in preparing the budget. It'd be helpful to share that with the board. Yeah, so that'll all be that'll all be reflected in the in the revenue projections, um, of course. But um, as I said, there's five hundred and almost five hundred and fifty thousand dollars in flex in the budget that we're ready to present the board of trustees. Yeah. So I, there's so a lot of I, reduction sorry. of revenue and increasing of spending to get to that sweet spot that we're all looking for. Uh, I'm appreciative of that, but I'm not looking necessarily for line items. I'm looking for, you know, totals in, you know, this is attributed to that, et cetera. Where, where, you know, where the, as you made a quick analysis of some of it is coming from the sales tax, some of it is coming from the reduced pension, et cetera. I'd like to see all that, uh, at, you know, in big picture approach so that we really understand you know, how much we're increasing the budget by uh, money is coming from in relation to our ongoing programs. You, you, you will have, so I, you'll have what we're increasing the budget by as far as projections. You'll have what we're increasing the budget by as far as expenses. Um, it all becomes lumped into one pot as far as revenue because revenues are combined for the village. Um, and expenses should be and can be justified by us. For instance, if I'm asking for staff to be returned like a village engineer and a, and a planner, it's my job, it's my task to justify to the board on why we need these individuals to come back. I can't attribute the increase in revenue in parking that we're projection, pro projecting to a line item and expense. I can't do that because that's not how we think. That's not how we put the budget together. That's not what I was asking for, Jerry. Okay. Okay. What then. I'm suggesting is you started off uh, and answered the question, you know, we're, uh, and in your presentation that uh, we're bringing back so many people and adding so many people. That's that comes up to a total dollar figure, whatever mm -hmm. it is. Okay. Um, you know, that the sales tax, you know, seems to be uh, X dollars more than what was projected. Okay. I can do that. So we have a relative idea yep. of the large numbers, not trying to assign a specific revenue to a specific um, expense, but taking a look at the total approaches to life, um, you know, and so that we can have some idea of what the juggling is, is and how it is being done. So we have, we can be on the same page with what sure. you have done in, in that we can look at it on a micro basis, which what you have done on a micro in, in the macro or the other way around, excuse me. Yeah, macro to micro. You've done so on a micro, can, micro we basis do and we do on a macro basis. Yep. And, and we can and provide that, that to the board by next week, by the end of next week, no problem. Because we've already Jerry, done it. Yeah. Jerry, what would help me, uh, I mean, I, what, what Dan suggests, I, I, I understand and that's fine, but what would help me too would be you know, the positions that you're putting back, if staff, and, and you know, there's the dollars and cents issue. Okay, so let's put that on one side. But I'd, I'd also like an operational narrative of 
why this would be an improvement to the operation of the community, uh, how you know things would function better if you know we hired ABC employee. Sure, it, it'll I'll, I'll be able to I'll be able to provide that, and it'll be more than just I don't want to do the engineer's job anymore type of thing. No, no problem. No, 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 it, it, I, I, no I, problem. We can provide I that. Wanted, I want it to be you know uh, explained in a functionality way. Yeah, of course. That's more than fair. Absolutely. And, we'll, and I'll work on that um, to make sure that that's clear in uh, a memo to the board regarding uh, uh, the budget. Okay, and thank you. It would also be, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Norma. Oh, I think we can all see why you don't want to keep doing the engineer's job, by the way. I think that's not, you know, that's not, that's very reasonable. Not, it's hard and um, I'm not an engineer. Yeah, in part, right. But um, you just play one at, uh, on TV, right? But, um, I, you know, I know Village Hall is pretty crowded and um, I know we're putting people back, but there is that territorial imperative where if there's an empty space, it gets filled. So yeah, yeah. Is, is there going to be, you know, are there going to be space adjustments that we have to consider too with this or are we going to be able to squeeze no, in? There won't, be, there won't be space adjustments for the people that we're returning. Uh, they may have uh, a smaller office than, they, than the engineer used to have in the past, mm -hmm. but other than that, there won't be space issues. Um, we already have them allotted. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. I think it would also be very helpful to share this with the budget committee uh, as we okay. go. Well. Who's, uh, who's liaison to the budget committee now? Tom, right? Um, yeah. Tom. Okay, okay. So you let me know when the next meeting is and, and I can, whatever I give the board, you know the rule, you know my rule, right? Whatever I give it's, to the board, I can give to the budget committee after. So it's no it's, problem there. It, it's their first, their meetings are always the first Wednesday of the month unless they've changed that. Okay. Um, uh, I'll take care of budget committee. Okay. We have a yeah. member watching right now. Well, good for them. Okay, good. So whatever Anybody I provide the board? board of trustees, I'll good. share with the budget committee. Victor, no go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry, for the presentation. I hear you're going to send it to us. Yeah. Uh, and in order to produce that, you know, uh, view, and I think you have in a way preempted part of this conversation, which I'm not 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 complaining about it. I, I think it's great you have a clear vision. But in order to produce that presentation, you said you're you're, you're almost ready to go. You have you have those drafts. You have you have, have the budget, you have the budget ready. So. I think instead of waiting for four, three weeks, I could I would benefit to, by digesting it slowly and then have real questions. Uh, so if you could provide it to us earlier in a very draft form, in a one that but that it'll help it'll help tremendously. So 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 that's number one. Number two, uh, I do think the conver this, the conversation is is missing those capital improvements. I've been here long enough to see a lot of great ideas and very few yeah. really get to the yeah. ground, not because anybody's fault other than the cycle of government is so difficult. I do think we're in a good place na moment now, as many of you have mentioned, to try to nail those, really nail those, to see some, some of those discussions. I think Nora just was tying the, the spaces we're having tremendous problems with with offices with the with the village hall with the offices and this is this is the opportunity really to look at that as grants are coming the things are kind of falling in place the the army corps of engineers project the engineering the, mm -hmm. everything is so this actually then and because of the work of the last couple of years the conversation on capital can be very can be very focused and in order for to be fully effective, it has to go earlier or after we see, it can only be productive if we see this presentation that you have with a very draft budget that we will all respect if you change things by the time you told us you would submit it to us in, I think it's March 18th. But yeah. by digesting it now really will give, give me that, 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 that vision of then what is where you can put not the money and cents, but but the big bucks, and and, and I, I I'm both 
can be as impactful on citizens residents i'm not i'm not you can tell her pointing at anything or suggesting anything different that, that everything has to be addressed in, in its context so so if that can be provided as you said like in a week or the end of this week yeah. it, it, be very fact, beneficial. i, I want to reinforce something that you said victor we're ready to give you the budget because we're comfortable with the numbers we're comfortable with the process we're comfortable with everything that we've done we're ready to hand it off to the board of trustees in a draft pre pre discussion form mm -hmm. so that the trustees which is one of the main in my opinion one of the main jobs that you do is to overview the oversee the budget i mean look the budget over and take a look to see what numbers may be a little uncertain um, as you look at them, we're ready to do that. I'm ready tonight to be able okay. to do that. I will go over it with Augie and Laura and Dan. I'm off tomorrow. I have to be in court in Long Island, but on Wednesday, we'll make time, go over it and get it to you. No problem. Completely yeah. confident in the budget that we're presented. That's terrific. It'll be a work yeah. document right. between interagency in, 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 between the village that, manager and the board of trustees. So that can be that, that, that is that is terrific. That's fine. Because then no the problem. next step is the next question is we I if, or maybe I'm wrong, but did we really nail a meeting on capital projects, capital plan? Did we I nail that? I think it's that? the 30th, right? I think it's the 30th. Yeah, we, we, we did that. I think it's the 30th, Victor, uh, but I don't have it in front of me. I should have it in front of me. Um, okay. But what I haven't done is I haven't worked with staff on the capital budget because we've been so focused on the general budget. So we'll transition to the capital budget, get ready for that meeting, and that'll be the that'll be the full meeting for capital. If we move ahead with this other very important. Yeah. I mean, the main components. Then, yeah. then uh, we'll let, we we'll said let it's the March. It's March thirtieth. It is March thirtieth. Yes, March March thirtieth. So we'll be ready. We'll be ready for the capital discussion on March 30th, um, okay. where we'll have the same right. format yes. that we've had in the past. All of the uh, budget sheets that were developed by department heads yes. that uh, um, Lou Young has just learned about the uh, last week. And uh, that big that big book, Lou, that was what we're talking about. Oh, that yeah, big book, it. capital, uh, that we gave you. All those, all those budget sheets that we gave you. Yes, and, yes. Um, uh, we'll be ready for the 30th, Victor. We'll be ready. Here's our proposal, and this goes. So this is all, this is also from experience. Sometimes we get to discuss a certain department, but we don't discuss the capital projects that relate to that. And then we then we discuss capital projects as a whole, which is great in a big context. But we have not had the chance to discuss or have that very specific discussion of how it fits in the in the village's work. So if we could have some of those, it doesn't have to be anything sophisticated, just a reference even to something old that as we, as we look at areas of the village and we discuss them in the budget or departments, discuss the capital projects that go with it. Oh. For example, yep. public works. Yes, yeah, you'll see. To, if, if, yeah. Even, even if, it, if, it's, if we dedicate some time organized so to some of those ticket, you know, big ticket items that require yeah. us, because then you, you, once you have, you, you have the, the department is capable to do that, then you can tie in that project or not. We're caught in this wheel. And again, not fault of anybody is the wheel yeah, yeah. problem of budget. So, and it happens in many projects and other work I do that you need to work also how I'm going to implement this. But if you get just looking at the department, you know, looking at what you're going to do, then you get lost caught there. You have all the good intentions, but plugging them, requires that connection. So even uh, some document, some very brief explanation of what capital items, what projects go with which, that would be very, very helpful as we, as we okay. move along. So, so, that's, so that's number the, reason, the reason I'm anxious to reintroduce the capital budget is because the capital budget has been significantly reduced. The fact that the federal government has taken our $7.8 million out of the capital budget for the Army Corps project, which was our previous commitment, and the grant that we received, yeah. the, the capital budget is actually going down. In addition to that, we're purchasing items. So the, the capital budget is being reduced. I want to give you a fresh new spreadsheet, but 
Augie and Laura can easily redistribute to all the board members last year's last year's spreadsheet to take a look at those priority projects that you want to grab and, and talk about if that's what you want to do. As, okay. as, as we're digesting the village, yeah. then you can see also it will be very beneficial. Yep. And then the Army Corps is a good example because actually the budget committee was telling us always, why are you putting that up there? It's, it's really- They would always ask that. And has to be the federal government. And, and they were they were actually right. But one more thing, because I see Trustee Notch is asking more is, is uh, uh, I, I'll focus on one set of priorities as you review the project and we all discuss this, is, uh, it, and it's, it's no coincidence, or you may see whatever, uh, is, is all the issues that have been brought to our attention for years and very recently uh, on, the, on, the, on the Washingtonville area. And actually, uh, I, I mentioned it separately the other day as we were discussing those the ERPA funds on, on, on doing uh, some of that uh, stormwater management, water flow analysis of where because it's it's it, it's another we we're, we're talking about not having another another um, you know flood problem. But if it would strike today, if it strikes now or in April, we have the same drainage problem. Yeah, we have the same. So we, we we so we really you know I can't leave this special moment to 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 do something about it and and other issues. I'm not going to highlight it all, but I would say that area of the village and one or two priorities of each area of the village, because maybe some uh, uh, heights you know, has some issues, some kind of key issues of each area would need to be addressed and integrated that's, that's issue, into, into our budget so that we know we have the capital, the project, and the people to support that, as you see. So, so that is kind of a more holistic uh, uh, view. And, and also, so, so I won't repeat them, but all the lineup of, of, of requests from, for example, Washingtonville and, and very specific issues of, of the other neighborhoods. So that it's kind of fair and square, that fairness that we've been talking about. We, we, were, we, we implemented that policy and it's not about talking or enacting policies, it's just getting them done. So, so that is, that is uh, I think yeah. the three things that, would, that, would, that I wanted to, to put on the table. So, so that's a new look, that's a completely different look. What we have now is a capital budget where the department heads prioritize how they feel the purchases um, should happen. We also have a criteria scale that only I put, it's only my opinion, that cri cri criteria scale that we follow the, the comptroller's guidance is only my opinion of what criteria is more important. Is a trash truck more important than a fire truck? In my opinion, no. So, so those kinds of things are in our capital budget, but we never looked at what you just said certain sections of the community and what priorities that section of the community looks at. That's just another way of prioritizing. That's where we need guidance. And that's why I'll finish again, just highlighting the flooding. I, if, it, if, it, if you have another big rain, yep. those, those, those drains are not gonna do it. And, and, yep. and we have the aquifer question mark, ha have some money for that aquifer. And without those, this, those elements, we, we can do beautiful land use or enact whatever we want to enact, but the, 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 the information is gonna be there for, for, for our planner, for that engineer you wanna hire, that planner, the boards, the, 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 the projects, the, the actual developers, the community, we, we, are, we, we need to invest in, 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 in giving a, a current view of, of, of what, is, what, is, what is there. So I, I think that's my priority number one. We kind of those directives come from you guys. Those directives comes comes from from. But actually, I'm not overimposing. I'll finish with this again because it, it's really the priorities that come out old from 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 the previous comprehensive plan and the period and, and it all they all they all yeah. come up. With, this is the five priorities that are there for the village for all of us. That is, it's like a, the kind of the little constitution we have, and it binds us board and you and everybody. It's, the, it's simple, like plotting. What are we doing about this one? Every budget needs to hit hard on that one. And if our uh, situation is recovering, this is the time. We have federal money coming in. We have project coming. This is the time yep. where we can really nail it and have a, a budget that is going to be the most meaningful, I guess, of a decade. Victor, I, I actually agree with that uh, initiative. And I also think that it dovetails, you know, if, if you're a community that has the flooding issues that we have, 
and you don't have an engineer working on it constantly, yeah. you, you, you're behind the eight ball. So I, 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 I think that that dovetails into you know having staff who could work on projects like that and uh, not have it to hire. But I, I do agree that that should definitely be a priority. It is a great discussion point, an excellent discussion point. I agree with, with Victor 100%. Jerry, in terms of the capital budget, you know, last yeah. year we had three pages of items, uh, some large and a lot of small uh, things, and they were ranked in multiple ways. I think the issue would be to have, if, if when you present it, to have the first 10, the second 10, you know, et cetera, going down in terms of the major priorities for a capital budget uh, and spread and, and continue to look at it over the five year period. Um, otherwise it gets, it gets overwhelming to try and get to it. We're, we're, we're not out of the minutia to the big picture. And I think that's part of what Victor is talking about as well. Minutia. I think that would be very helpful. So, um, no, I agree with you. The thing is, there's nobody else to ask about reorganizing the priorities except the board members. So, for instance, let me explain that. The yes. department heads have provided their priority. They're not going to change their mind. Um, I may have priorities, but I'm not the entity, I'm not the person that approves capital budgets, the capital budget. That'll be the board of trustees. If there's any way that you want us to look at the priorities of the, of the capital budget, I think, I think it's gonna have to come from the board of trustees and what your priorities are so that we can initiate those priorities in number order as you provide them to us. If that's what you want, want us to do, which I'm I happy to be, to be part of uh, doing it with, with the rest of no the- There's no one else to ask for priorities. Like I, you know what I mean? We've already given our priorities. I've given my criteria scale. Other than the board, which I really, I want, I want the priorities to come from the people who are approving the expense, who are passing the resolution, who are voting on the resolution, of resolutions for all these items. So we can have those. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. If that, I don't have a problem with that, but then we can't have wait to the 30th. We have to have this stuff next week so that we can start to go through that and work because it takes time. You, you all, instead, yeah. you have been taking, you know, been working on months on the budget. That's not what we're going to do. But for us to do it, we need to see what everybody else has in mind and have time to put that together in a meaningful manner. And you can't do that, you know, by getting it on the 30th and doing it on the 30th. Right. Because so it won't take me, it won't take me and staff, it won't take um, staff and I more than one day to um, remove the items that have already been purchased out of the capital budget, take a look at items that have expired or have been funded with other money. It won't take us more than one day, Dan. So we can have that to you early next week so that the capital budget is the boards to dice up, chop up, however you want to do it. And then we can have that discussion uh, on the 30th. We can get that to you. That's no problem. Well, all of the work has been done in the capital budget, except the updating. And it won't take us a week to do the updating. It'll take us a day to do updating. So I'm comfortable. We're right there. I mean, we're, we're like I said in, in the previous meeting, we're, we're thinking about our, our budget all year long. That's why when we set ourselves up this year to start looking at the budget, we knew exactly what, uh, what we were looking at and hoping and praying that the end of the pandemic was getting close. I still don't know if we're close, but mandates are being lifted and things seem to want to go back to normal. So that's how we're, that's how we're trying to approach it. I, Mayor, I didn't think we had 50, uh, 60 minutes worth of conversation, but I'm glad that we did. I, I have just one more comment, and it's about the Army Corps. And it's great that we can take it out because the federal government is taking care of our share. But yeah. we have, we still have to maintain it. 
So yes. once the plan is executed, we have to be we have to have in the budget a hefty annual fee for maintaining it. Yeah. And um, I think we need to not we've never budgeted for that. We've never really considered that. And to that end, you know, we haven't done a good job of maintaining that reservoir. And that's why it's in such poor shape. You know, it was released to us and we didn't maintain it. So, you know, I think that um, we want to be sure we're putting away funds for this maintenance of the Army Corps plan once it's completed, because that's something that's completely on us. OK, is that, that that is an operational okay. recurring uh, yeah. that's going to have to be in the budget when it's operational. Right. But when I mean, it's completed. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, my point is you don't put it in now because it's not operational now. No, but I think it's something it's going to be a hefty chunk of a budget oh, yeah. and we don't it's not going to be offset by any new kind of revenue. That's all. Yeah, it's going to be several hundred thousand. But, but I want to tell you wh why there's also some items in the budget that may not be the focus of uh, of um, uh, of what we've looked at in the past. And that's with our negotiated um, um, CSEA uh, contract. When we hire a new motor equipment operator, that starting salary is $20,000 less than the person that's retiring. When we hire a new laborer, that starting salary is $14,000 less. And when I say that, it's also savings that we can count on year after year after year as our, as our long-term employees retire and we replace them with new employees because there's no step guide anymore. They basically do not get their five, $6,000 chunk in increases as a step and the 2% or 2.5% negotiated. They're just getting the 2% negotiated. And so that's saving us a tremendous amount of money in labor costs mm -hmm. um, that I can demonstrate and I'll do an analysis when I'm finished with the capital budget and when we're finished with the budget meetings. And I'll be able to demonstrate that because we have retirees, people who have worked here 25, 30 years. They leave and we replace them, uh, just like mechanics, right? Mechanics now are $16,000 less starting salary for a mechanic, uh, only because we were so successful at negotiating the contract. And those are, those are long-term savings, Nora, that will yep. help us add 250, 350,000 for the ongoing maintenance of the, of the Army Corps project. Because Good. I think our number is like 350,000 yeah, a year. It's big. it's big. Yeah, it's big. It's a lot. It's almost like so much. How are we going to spend all that money? Good. Okay. Good. Can I say something? Yeah, Lou, go ahead. Okay. Then, then we have to move on. Okay. Yeah. Because uh, two, th two things. One, we were talking about priorities. And, and uh, Jerry can't set the priorities. We have to set them and then tell him what to do. We can't wait for him to tell us what he wants to do and then pick at it. So uh, if there aren't priorities, it's because this board hasn't set them. Uh, and the other thing about maintenance of, of, this, uh, of this project, yeah, we're gonna have to maintain it. We have to send police cars over there too. We have to do all sorts of stuff for that part of the community. And it hasn't been done for years, which is what I was talking about with the river maintenance fund. We haven't, we've been ignoring it. So yeah, we're gonna have to maintain that project when it's built, absolutely. I'm finished. Okay. Uh, Thank you, Jerry and staff and board. Yeah. Uh, Jerry, I'm looking forward to reading the whole thing. Every mayor, everyone's contributed to this process, but no one has contributed more than Augie, Dan, and Laura Vasami. And Laura's my we, favorite. We are well served. <laughs> oh, Jerry, Jerry, she just got off the call. She missed that. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you all. Um, we're going to go to the regular Board of Trustees work session. Uh, we need a motion to open the work session. So moved. We, so we already space? did. No, we, um, that, that was the budget session. Well, now we're opening the work session. Uh, all in, it was seconded by Lou. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, thank you. Uh, I see we have, uh, I saw Mr. Burke. Where'd Mr. Burke go? Hey, he's there. I see him. Oh, hey, Good Thomas. evening, Mr. Mayor, trustees. Hi, hi, buddy. How are you? 
Good. Uh, you know, it, it, as is our want when there is a visitor uh, who has a business before us uh, at this point, uh, Mr. Burt is the chairman of the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission. Uh, we're going to take that item. Oh, oh, I need a motion for the adoption of the agenda. Before we do that, I'd like to vote the motion to adopt the agenda, but there are uh, at least two things that were left out of the agenda that should that need to be in, in the future. Uh, one has to do with the enforcement of the multiple dwellings law, which we have not completed. And the other was the community refrigerator, and they should be back in the uh, where they are, were, and that um, uh, the uh, uh, review of the uh, recommended change in the wetlands law uh, be moved to number one. And with those changes, I so yeah, I, I, okay. He made the motion. Second. I second it. Roll roll. Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Uh, so let's go to Mr. Burt's item. Uh, let me just find it on the agenda. Uh, okay, uh, proposed wetlands amendment from HCCMC. This is uh, item 1H, or as my grandma would say, H. Uh, Thomas, would you like to give us a, 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 a rough and uh, ready uh, assessment of what this is? I would. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the, the big ticket item here is that it moves the, it, it makes the Harbor Coastal Zone Management Commission the permitting authority for uh, wetlands permits. Uh, there are a bunch of other small fixes in there. Uh, it uh, clarifies the definition of wetlands in a few respects. Uh, you can see in the red line, in the black lines, and um, and does some other definitional stuff. But the, and it aligns uh, the notification practices with what's used for every other uh, application. But the major thing that it does is changes the authority. Much of what comes in front of Harbor Coastal for consistency comes on uh, wetlands applications, but they have to go through planning first, which means it's first touched by planning and then by us. Some of that seems to me unnecessary since much of what we're going to do is uh, our review of floodplain and environmental issues that are already embodied in uh, our uh, policies for consistency. As we are currently and have long been the permitting authority for uh, marine structures, we could be the permitting authority for wetlands. And that means that at least some group of applications are only going to need one board to touch them instead of two. Okay. Um, do we know why planning was the permitting authority before? Yeah, that, I, it's been, asking, there, there has to be some history here, right? There probably is, and it's, it has been that way for so long that I can't give you a history. If I, uh, first of all, um, I want to thank the um, Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission for a unbelievably thorough job of um, going through the nitty gritty, which ain't easy. Um, and for the last uh, two and a half years, the, this board has been saying that, you know, it should be moved from the uh, planning board to the, uh, uh, <clears throat> to the Harbor and Coastal Zone Management Commission for the wetlands permit. The reason I think it was in the planning board originally was uh, that is that the law itself was defined as, or I guess it was is targeted as under the DEC as a freshwater wetlands, um, and it's it's really not. It's all wetlands. Um, in that, so um, when most communities don't have a harbor and coastal zone management commission separate from a planning board. Um, and so at the time I think this was done, uh, it just was handled that way. Um, and um, it has become, I think, a, a detriment to try and, you know, it just adds more, more stops and, and less productivity in terms of uh, review and uh, getting to coming to grips with it. It doesn't take away any of the planning board's authority for what their role is in site planning 
et cetera. But it does uh, help to streamline the process, which is one of the major issues that we continually hear rumblings about uh, from residents and applicants uh, as well. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not uh, necessarily against it. I just want to play devil's advocate here. Uh, I'd like to know, one of the things I'd like to know is, are there other communities, because there's a lot of communities now that have a uh, coastal zone management program, how do they handle it? Uh, are, are there CZMs permitting authorities for wetlands too? So if I, I, may, I, wanna, if I may attempt to answer that, Tom. Most communities like Rye and um, New Rochelle and others don't have a separate board. That, that, I, I understand that. My question is communities that have a separate board and how they handle it. It, it was very specific. Uh, and I would just, you know, I, 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 I would just like to see some research on that. Uh, so if we're reinventing the wheel, I just want to make sure that it hasn't been tried to be invented before and to see what, what happened in those other communities. I think that that's just basic due diligence and it wouldn't be hard to figure out. We could have, we could have our attorneys work on that. Let me share yeah, something. Hand up. Yeah, let me share something. I had some work on that field to work on the protecting the Hudson for many years. And in that capacity, looking at all the um, local uh, waterfront plans and which of the commissions, how they function, they are very different than actually uh, probably one, only one along the Hudson may have some resemblance or, or that independent that our ha ours has. And ours is very different from the ones along the shoreline. So they're very unique and that they're independent and have their own consistency are very, very few. So, so it's, a, it's very hard to compare. It's very difficult research because they're not, it's not that uh, it, it's, it, you cannot compare. You have to compare based on the structure. But if you compare the ones that do have more, more authority, uh, they, they, are giving the, uh, they are giving more permitting and, and are stronger. I, that, that, that's all I'm asking for is just. That's what I'm telling you. I only, I only could find one that was kind of as strong as ours all along the Hudson. Maybe there's two or three, but very few. So it's a very unique conversation. Okay. This, is, very but this is why we hire attorneys. To do this research for us. Can I, can I ask Victor where that is? What, what community is that, Victor? I think it's Sleepy Hollow, for example, is one. Sleepy Hollow? Sleepy, or... Sleepy Hollow is one. Um, and there's been a lot of progress in LWRP and commissions along the, because precisely the Department of State has been helping. So that every, every community has a stronger, especially riverfront ones. I don't know what, I don't know what it would give to, to this conversation since it's very specific on very detail, much details of, of, of the um, uh, wetlands and how it functions within the permitting. And that's where really I have the questions. But, but anyway, okay. if the board wants to go that way, I, I don't think it adds at this point to, to the conversation. It will slow down something that we've been waiting for like five years. I, 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 I just, so respectfully okay, well, disagree. I don't think that will give us any, any help, uh, man. Oh. Okay, uh, I, I, I don't see how looking to see if other communities have done this, it would be detrimental to the process. You know, it, it's just part of the process. That's just due diligence, it's doing your homework. Uh, I'm not I saying that we you. should- We've been I, I, I'm still talking, I'm still talking. Okay. I'm okay. not so, saying well. that we should not move forward with this, but while we're moving, it's okay to look. Okay, so make a proposal of who's gonna do it and when they're gonna bring it back to us because I don't really wanna slow this process down. Uh, you can, my suggestion is if you wanna have the attorneys uh, contact the Department of State and Coastal Management, they will be the ones to be able to tell you. I so, think that that is a good-, that uh, is a good Let me uh, finish, please. Oh, I'm the, sorry, I was, I was agreeing with you. I know you're not used to that, but I was agreeing with you. <laughs> okay. Uh, on, the so, on the south end of Long Island, <laughs> most of the, wetland areas are owned by the town, but under a different mechanism and the trustees actually have um, a separate role than the, than the trustees for the village or the, or the town. So you have a separate board and they control um, with complete autonomy um, 
what you what you can and cannot do in the wetlands. Um, and that's uh, and that has to do with the underwater land ownership and how that came about. Uh, but that has what, to do with patents. Yes, I'm sorry. That has to do with the patents, right? Yeah, you're talking about the letters patents, and, and for, for instance, Donegal patent covers uh, most of the Hamptons. Uh, right. It gets it gets to be a much a much tighter and a much different vantage point than what I think is being done, but conceptually the same. I.e., you're having your your what we have is a structures permit, um, you know, a CZM uh, review, and what we're suggesting is the wetlands permit all in one. Um, many of them are uh, are more fractionalized uh, on the east end of Long Island due to the ownership issues, uh, because that triggers a whole different um, issue. Uh, but what I'd like to suggest is, uh, you know, uh, maybe the um, you all can, you know, as the trends can move forward and uh, a quick review on that, and hopefully get back to us in, you know, a week or two. Um, uh, the Department of State is a good resource and can tell you quickly, you know, if there are other communities and where they might be. Uh, and, um, but I'd like to try and, um, you know, if the board is in agreement, by sending it to the other land use boards for their comments. Uh, so, you know, uh, don't sidetrack this. Well, I'd, I'd like to discuss this at least at one more meeting before we send it to the land use boards for your comments, because that usually is when you, you've already decided that the, that you, you're going to pass a law. And I, I'd like you know input. Let me finish. I swear. I'd like input from the village attorneys on you know the draft of the law and uh, if they see any uh, hiccups or modifications that needed to be made and have this back on the agenda in two weeks and see where we are. It's a huge change. Second, second it's a huge the, change. The idea of moving this forward uh, and at the same go, working on parallel tracks so that we can then get all the input at the same time, give them two weeks or two, because they typically take even longer. And actually, why we, for, why do we want this to go to zoning, uh, Trustee Natchez? Why do we want this? Maybe I, planning just, understand why do we, they want it to go to zoning? Uh, I don't care whether it goes to zoning or not. It's just been the practice that we've sent it to land use boards when we do we're changing land use language. But you know, but it's nothing they implement. Ba basically, why? what you need is the the input from the planning board, right? Uh, why don't we refer to them at well, the same time that we make all the other research and then because they we don't know what we don't know if we're going to change. Can I finish? More. Can I finish? They sure. they, they work uh, more. Uh, they they uh, meet more regularly, so we can get their feedback and then put everything together, and then we don't piecemeal so much. So if we can refer to that, I'll second your motion and move, move. Let's move this forward. Let's try to get things up. Okay, so let me get this straight. You want to send this to the land use boards tonight. After it's a major law, it's the first time we've looked at it before the village attorneys have done the research or opined on it. Well, the lawyers prepared this, isn't didn't they? The land use lawyers helped the board prepare this. Actually, you didn't have half the chance to do but the most important thing today. Lawyers, Can I finish? Victor, you you gave me the word. Can I finish? Rusty, okay. let me ask. We have here the chair of the commission. Actually, we're arguing, talking of arguing among ourselves, where we have this great opportunity to have him spend this and hold ask on. him questions. Have the hold lawyers, on, have the I, lawyers I, 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 looked at this? Can I ask him a question? Have the lawyers, land use lawyers, helped you prepare this? How is this coming to us? Because really, the main questions we haven't asked you. How, how did this come about? Hold on. Before Before answer, answer, how, gonna, how have I you reached this point? Can I finish this? Victor, there's a point of information here that you're missing. The land use board lawyer may have helped them or and that's fine. I have no problem with that. We are represented by the village attorney. We are the people who pass the law. Those land use attorneys are not representing us in this matter. We have a village attorney and we, we ask him to review the law. Now, I know you'd all like to write him out of the process, but he's an integral part of the process. This is the law of the village of Mamarinic. It's not the law. Yeah. In all due respect, it's not the law of the, the zoning board. It's not the law of the planning board. It's not the law of HCZM. It's our law. So I want our attorney 
to review it. This is I want that too. I second, I second that, Mayor. I second that. I hope, Bob, I'm sure Bob and Mark are going to give us great advice in two weeks. Happy and welcome that. Actually, it's not just necessary. It's part of our system. But I wanted okay. to ask to ask, uh, our, the commissioner or the head of the commission to tell us how this got to us after years of the making. Is I think that's the reason why we're here. It, it is to, to review that law to decide whether we want to move forward. And you're wanting to send it to the other land use boards without having all lawyer review it. Go ahead, but if, 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 Thomas, if you want to ask I think we have time. Well, just to try to be informative, actually, we, we worked on this for quite a while. And uh, in the drafting stage, uh, we still shared uh, counsel with the board of trustees. So at that point, it was uh, it was the, fo the folks from uh, Mr. Spalzino's office who were uh, who were assisting us with getting the draft together. So just telling you for information purposes. But that's been over, well over a year ago, right? Yeah. It, it went, it, yes, that's correct. It, it went around for a while, so. And who was that, was that Christy? Yes. Probably Christy, yeah. Okay, so she's no longer here. I, I understand, some institutional memory may have been lost. I'm not trying to push anybody about who should or needs to review it. I was just providing information. Thank you, Thomas. All I'm asking is to wait two weeks before you make a decision. You, you, you so many things have languished for, for years. Now this has to be done tonight. Can I ask you a question, please? So I'm telling. Please do. Uh, Trust uh, Commissioner Burke. Uh, this, this, you have land use counsel from a law firm. Uh, did they help you prepare this, or is it just uh, the well, commission working? What What I was telling you is when we had land use counsel that were from the same firm as yes. uh, the Board of Trustees Council, we had their assistance drafting. Uh, it, we've, we've now moved this through the process and we haven't had uh, much interaction with uh, our present land use counsel on this. Thank you, that was the question and we're finally getting, so, so essentially, uh, one, how you, do you want to, to fill that gap? Do you want to run it again through them or should we then, how, because I don't want them, how, how can we streamline this process? Really the main of the conversation, because are you going to refer to them or, and they are the same as the land and as the planning board, shouldn't we have eventually more like a joint? I mean, has, has your land, land use council, your council checked it, says it's good to go, good to pass to the board of trustees, or I don't want to go back, back, you know, Hold back to questions that or issues that they're going to say. Well, we, we think that was that was probably not the right w the way we wanted you to proceed. I, I want to just kind of not if we're going to move forward, know that the, the council that is is now sitting next to you is is okay with all this of uh, with all this of changes. So so that I hasn't think. happened. I wish I could read them. No, let me let him answer, please. So wait, that that that's a question to me. Wait, yeah. Uh, we're we're fine with our hands are off it. We we had counsel in drafting. We voted it, and it's our recommendation. I, okay. I'm not worried Tom, that that we don't have attorneys' opinions on it. We no, do. Thomas, I understand that. I understand that, and I appreciate that. But I think the question was: Has the current counsel reviewed it? Uh, they they reviewed it uh, briefly. They did not do a deep dive because that okay. had already been done by. Mr. Spalziano's office. And I, I understand there's been a change in personnel that was a while ago. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So we have a situation where if you're making the argument that the current land use council was the one who did it, that didn't happen. Uh, this has been over a year since Mr. Spalzino's firm has looked at it with an attorney who's no longer there. This would be foolhardy to send out to the other boards and commissions until we've given them, our, our attorneys, at least two weeks to look at it. And I don't know what the, the, the problem was with two weeks. And to also look at the other issue about other communities and how they operate. Um, I, I don't can, understand. Can I say something? Yeah, please do. Okay. So having spent a lot of time with our LWRP rewrite, which isn't fully completed and adopted. That was before I was a trustee. Um, I am 
LWRPs are as varied as the communities in which they sit. So I don't think there's an awful lot of benefit in comparing um, th this process to other communities. Um, and you know, if if that's something we want to ask the attorney to do, I'm just I'm not sure it's it's a good use of their time. Um, I would suggest that you know we develop a policy that if we're going to discuss a law, we make it you know. I mean, we ask the attorneys, we give them a heads up. Like we've had this, this was on the agenda. This is the third time it's been on the agenda. We should point out to them <laughs> that this is gonna be up. You know, it's, it's, we don't always get through our agenda. And sometimes it feels like, you know, you've taken a test two or three, you're prepared for the test two or three times, the test get can gets canceled, but you still have to keep studying for it. So I think we should be better off at, you know, letting, just reminding our attorneys that this is something that we're gonna discuss today. We're not great at that. And I also think, based on all of the laws we have passed and tried to pass where we've involved land use boards, um, there's a benefit to sending it to the boards who may have comments earlier on. And so I think while we're while Bob and Mark are looking at this draft, it's there's nothing wrong with the planning board making comments as well, because we're all going to keep going back and forth on this. And let's just do a parallel track. This is this is not a complicated law. This is something that's been discussed for many years. And I think we can proceed judiciously and efficiently by sending it to the planning board and by asking Bob and Mark to, to do a review. I mean, even if they reviewed it a year ago, how are they gonna remember? You know, it's, it's a year ago. So um, that's, okay. that just, would be my I proposal. Just point out, and Tom's could correct me if I'm wrong. He's the current chairman, I'm a past chairman. The wetlands permit is not dependent upon the policies of an LWRP. So it, that's kind of apples and oranges right there. So I think it is helpful to look at how other communities are doing this. I, I don't understand why you wouldn't. Uh, it, it just seems to me to be, you know, this is a two week wait on a law that's very important changing permitting authority for an important function. And it may very well be the best thing to do. And I'm not saying it isn't. It's the first time we're discussing it. We, we, we've had laws that we discussed for a year and a half. Yes, Victor. Victor. We, we have here a recommendation from a commission that they say it's final, they voted on it. So our, I think at this point, then we'll see where we act, but we are not gonna now say, oh, we're gonna redraft that, the commission, or, 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 or are, are you suggesting that we now say, have our attorney review, and then we take this and say, you know what, we just don't wanna act on it. We're gonna send it back to you guys. I think no. it's better just to forward, pass, pass it on to the, to the, to the board, uh, as, Nora, as Nora, Trustee Lucas was saying, and on a parallel track, we wait and see what our, uh, attorney has to say, and we then we'll make a decision. But but then then we'll we'll have we we'll have advanced as you say we've been dragging in so many laws, so many long so, so a long time. Uh, I think we have a final advice and a recommendation. Let's pass it on and then have a full discussion. Try second, right. Trustee Lucas is uh, uh, maybe call for a vote then. No, you, you can do yeah, it. I mean, this you, you have, you have three vote. of you want to do it, but I'm just pointing out that it makes no sense. You know, it, it really doesn't. You know, the idea, and I and I respect the uh, CZM, and you know, I, I was a member of CZM, but you're saying you know they passed it unanimously, and that's great. It's a recommendation. We're we're the legislating board. They're not trying to legislate. They just gave us. You know, this was like if we had passed the the first tree law that came to us, we'd all be gone. You know, because, because that wasn't something that the community was going to support. So to say, oh, we got this from a board and, you know, we're just going to pass it on like, like, like we're a pass through. We're legislators. All I'm asking is for time to do due diligence. If you don't want to have the time to do due diligence, fine. Send it on to the other boards. But, you know, let them know that I, it, it could very well change. I, you know, I, I, I'm not, I, I, I think that we're having a conversation without really hearing each other. Oh, I, I, I think I, I don't agree with you. 
Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm not against this. I, I'm asking I, for two weeks time I, for people to do due diligence. It makes I finish? No sense. Can I finish? I think part of the due diligence, the part of the due diligence that we need to do, and we don't do this as a rule, is get information from all the stakeholders in the beginning. The planning board is a stakeholder here. Our lawyers are going to keep us on the straight and arrow here. They can work simultaneously without being in competition. And so I think that if we ask the planning board for comments and we get comments from Bob and Mark and you know, if Bob and Mark, if we, if, 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 if enough people think it's productive for Bob and Mark to do some research with DOS to see if there's any other kinds of examples or any precedents, they're going to figure out pretty quickly. They're smart guys, whether or not their research is productive. And then in two weeks, or maybe four weeks, depending on how this all takes, we'll be able to have an informed conversation all with right, information so from the agenda for two weeks from now. And if we don't have all the information, We'll make it clear and we'll discuss it two weeks after that. But I think if Bob and Mark can get their stuff done in two weeks and the planning board can make comments in two weeks, which maybe they can't, we'll have it, we'll have more information. Yeah, that's what I thought. I said, yeah. Well, second that for a third time. Can we just vote on it? Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you can do it. Yeah, fine, fine. You know, so unanimously just it. pass it on. Okay. So it's gonna be referred to uh, Commissioner Burt. And we're going to move forward on this. Thank you for you know, it. You have to look at the, the code. The, the code says uh, that may be referred to land use boards. I don't think it just says uh, planning board. So I don't want to get in a situation where if the code says may be referred to uh, land use boards and we're just sending it to one board. Mayor, can you read the entire sen sentence? Time. Can you read the entire what? sentence? Because I think at the beginning it says, if it's a change to 242, can you read the entire section? I think it's though you have to refer to those three at the minimum if it's if it's uh, a land use change. But we have lawyers here that can help us, Mark and Bob. What's the uh, what's the section? The full section. I have to pull up the code. It's going to take me a few minutes to do this, so. I think we're going to be here for a while. <laughs> Agreed. Do you have the section, Mayor? It'll help me uh, grab the section. I don't have the section. I just do it off the top of my head. Oh, okay. You know, I, re I read something somewhere and sometimes it sticks. If, if I may, just pragmatically, the, some of the folks at uh, zoning have uh, been commis past commissioners of Harbor Coastal and they're, they're fine people, volunteer land, land use, uh, uh, and, and sometimes land use professionals whose opinions I respect. I, I, as a practical matter, I have no issue with getting uh, their views of the proposed law. I agree with you. I, I don't know why you wouldn't. David, David, David sat with me uh, and uh, for a year and Okay, so instead of, instead of having him look it up, why don't we just send it to zoning and planning? Sure. With me. Right? Sure. I don't know. Fine. Okay, fine. Thomas, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Trustees, Mr. Mayor, appreciate your, uh, your attention to this. And, yeah, did you enjoy the trip? I did. Thank you for asking. I'm now a bit jet lagged, but if you need any, uh, I, I got to show my kids Rome and, and Florence, and, and I will tell you that some things you really have to see with your own eyes. If you ever have the opportunity, I would say David is one of those things that you can't fully appreciate from photographs. I, 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 I was uh, living vicariously. I was jealous. Have a great time. Thank, thanks very thanks, much, folks. Thank Take you. Care. All righty, <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> uh, item 1A, American Rescue Plans. Mayor, Mr. Sorry, Clark, you want to start I... I'm sorry, what? Go ahead. Mr. Sarnoff and I were very engrossed and, and involved in the uh, budget, so we didn't have time to uh, put a detailed plan together as the board has asked. So I don't have anything right. for a tonight. I, I don't have a problem with waiting on uh, Jerry, but 
my concern is that I think we've all agreed that river gauges are to be part of this. Oh, sure. I think so. Yeah. And that, I agree in, with the that. Operating, in the operating budget, you would need the uh, ten thousand dollars a year for three years. Okay, I'll get I'll get that in there. Reading with Julie. Uh, building vacancy upon expired terms. Hold on. What's she doing? I'm sorry, I got a little screwed up. Uh, is there an update for the village attorney to provide us? Well, I, we have provided you with the laws and we have provided you with a privileged and confidential memorandum with regard to what we see as a legal issue. I'll be happy to discuss it here if that's what the board wants, board wants to waive the privilege. If not, I will be uh, happy to discuss it in, uh, a, in an advice of counsel session, if you would prefer. I, I'm fine with discussing it out here. You folks fine with discussing it out here? Yeah, it's because it's basically, yes, it's the basically the same issue as the um, cannabis moratorium, the confusion. Yeah, here's, yeah. here's the, if- Okay, here's wait, the, wait, 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 before you get started, Nora and I have said we're okay with waiving the privilege. Uh, you're right. Are the rest of you okay with waiving the privilege? Yes. yes. All right. So we, we've got a majority. Okay. Go ahead. So here's the, the, the problem. And, and I should say, I may not have said this directly in the memorandum, but if you want to establish this, do, there has to be a referendum. If you want to uh, have that referendum at a special election, there is no problem. You can adopt this whenever you want. And there'll have to be a special election I think it's within 45 days. The problem comes if you want to have the referendum at the general election in November. The problem there is that there are two conflicting laws, okay? There's one law that says, if you want a proposal on the ballot in November, you have to have it to the Board of Elections by roughly August 1st, okay? The law dealing with referenda, with, with these kinds of changes, going to this law rule law, says that if you adopt the law before August 1st, you have to have a special election. So if you, there's no way to reconcile those two laws. If you read those two laws um, strictly, there's no way to put a referendum on the November ballot. And, and so I and I think this was this was a confusion that a lot of communities had with the um, permissive referendum related to opting out. And it's I think part of it is we we don't have village elections. So village elections were typically in March. So all of this language kind of relates to when the election occurs. But we, you know, 20 some odd years ago, we moved our elections to November. But the state law has never caught up with that. So it would, oh. and also now that we're no longer involved with the, now that the primary has been moved up to Beautiful. June and early voting is occurring, the Board of Elections needs all the information for referendums earlier so they can get the military ballots out. So like there have been other changes of, of, of deadlines to get something like it used to be, you had to have something to, to them like in September before a November, refer, a November election. Now That's we good. have to do it in August. That's so it seems good. like state law hasn't caught up with the change in, with the, with, the, with the changes that boards of elections have um, come up with in response to getting, to organizing early voting. So that's correct. The, the, these laws are mandatory permissive referendums. That's right. Mm -hmm. No, they're mandatory referendums. Referendums, not permissive. Not mandatory permissive referendum, mandatory referendum. They are not, they don't become law 
until they are passed by the voters. So this, this looks like a problem that we should ask the uh, state legislature to fix. Well, Cliff is not here. Um, um, if we if we voted theoretically on July 31st or 30th, whatever it is, um, can we designate the special election being no November or whatever? No. There's a 45 day right. time frame. I guess the other question is, I mean, it, it just seems like we're, it, it doesn't seem appropriate that there's this bind. Um, and the bind really was discovered because of all of the potential referendums for the opt-out law, because that timing didn't work. Okay. We didn't realize this a year ago when we adopted two laws that just never got to the referendum and that never got to the Board of Elections. Well, would it, would, would we, wouldn't we have run into the same problem if they had? I mean, nobody, nobody recognized it. No, I'm just saying. Yeah. All right, well, there, there's, there's a conundrum. Well, it's... It's, Mar it's now um, the beginning of March for all intents and purposes after tonight. Um, why don't we uh, go to the Attorney General for an interpretation? Uh, was this something the Attorney General would opine upon? I, I don't know. Um, she must love us by now. <laughs> I'm doubting it's landed on her desk. I can I can write a letter. We can write a letter to the attorney general saying, how does one get? Yeah. Can you answer the question of how one gets a referendum on the November ballot, given these conflicting provisions? I, I think we should write that and CC our two uh, yeah. representatives. Yes. I'm with you. Yes. And gosh darn it, put the governor on there, too. <laughs> OK. Well, we're not the only community that's had that problem. I, I know, I, yeah. but, it, but if you don't, I mean, obviously I'm, I'm not in favor of any of this, but I think that, that, that the logistical problem of uh, figuring out how to do referendums should be fixed. Yeah. All right, so uh, Bob, can you get that uh, when you he get can. a chance? Mark, Mark Kent. Mark Kent. Hi, Mark. Thank you, Mark. I love that. Uh, I, love I just that. want to put it, we, we have on tonight, uh, Mr. Mr. Shafir, am I pronouncing it correctly? Uh, Mr. Shafir is here uh, for Venicity, which is on for the regular meeting. Uh, so I'm going to skip ahead to 2E so that we're not wasting uh, Mr. Shafir's time and our time. So Venicity uh, 2E. And thank you for coming here, sir. Thank you very much, Mayor and Board of Trustees. Uh, it's great, and, and everyone else in attendance. It's uh, lovely to have the opportunity to speak with you all and share what it is that we do for communities and see if this is something for you. Uh, just to share, you guys can all hear me just okay? Yep. Yeah, go ahead. I, I just have so, to pop up for a second, but I'll be right back. Go ahead. Okay. Should, should we wait Master, for you? What time is it in Israel? It's uh, it's tomorrow. It's, it's about 12.40 a.m. Thank you. <laughs> it's okay. My initial thoughts was this was starting at 3 a.m. So uh, this is uh, this is a break. prime coffee. Uh, excellent. So should we wait for the mayor to return? Yeah, I think he's interested in hearing this. Wonderful. Excellent. Augie, can Jonathan share his screen? Yeah. Uh, is that something you plan on doing, Jonathan? Yes. Yeah, Can you guys okay. see my screen? Yeah. Yeah. So put the presentation. Fantastic. Perfect. Excellent. Just uh, whilst I uh, wait for the mayor to return, I'm not too sure if I've been to Mamaric, but I've certainly been to Westchester many, many years ago. So uh, I do have fond memories of the of the area. I'm originally from Australia, so uh, hence why the accent doesn't sound very Israeli. Um, but uh, very nice to meet all of you today. Same here. 
It's as big as it gets. This thing's not on. Mm -hmm. Same thing with the uh, second deal. Go ahead and roll. Well, excellent. Uh, so yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll just wait for the mayor to. Wait I don't know if that has to go up. Oh, you're right. Yeah. And then later on, you'll have to rejoin it with your with your video. Jonathan, the mayor is he's returned. Oh, perfect. It's uh, my eyesight is uh, Andre. If you could mute yourself, we have a presentation. Then we'll uh, when you mute us. Excellent. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to present. Uh, my name is Jonathan Shafir. I oversee uh, village and city partnerships here at Zen City. Uh, just to share a little bit about Zen City, uh, we are a local government exclusive uh, technology vendor and our main mission is to help village leadership better connect, better engage, better understand their quiet majority residents. So the voices, the residents, I don't always have the right opportunity or the right means to share what's going on and what they care about within the village. And we do this to counterbalance uh, what we refer to as the same 10 people, the same few voices that we hear from uh, very frequently. Um, we call them the STPs, same 10 people. And we love them because they're passionate members of our community. But our uh, primary goal is to help you guys hear from the remaining 20,000 other residents on things that are important to the village, whether it be from flooding measures or anything or any of the matters we've uh, participated in the last hour or so, anywhere to down to downtown redevelopment projects, to what should our new park look like? Should we introduce pickleball courts, splash pads, and really understanding resident opinion and resident sentiment from all pockets of our community. That's our primary mission. Uh, and I'll just go through in just a few slides as to how we actually achieve this. But, uh, um, as an Australian, uh, feel free to ask questions as we go along. Um, I'm very polite, so I, I always like to keep council sessions as uh, conversational as possible. Excellent. Uh, as mentioned, we are a local government exclusive vendor, so we only work with cities, towns, villages, counties, and a few different state agencies and district partnerships. Uh, we work look, uh, for cities as large as Los Angeles and Chicago. But like our bread and butter is actually working with towns and villages between about 10 to 50,000 residents. This is where we do work directly with board of trustees, board of council members, city manager, mayors. Uh, and this is where we actually see uh, most impactful change because we're working very closely with senior leadership. Just to share, we work with about 300 municipal, uh, local governments uh, within your area of similar sized communities, towns like Guildford, West Springfield, Middleton, Mer Meriden, uh, Windsor, Longmeadow, which is even considerably smaller than you guys. I would focus that our main pillars uh, would harp on this. Tap into our quiet majority residents, address any misinformation, misunderstanding within the community, but most impactfully, improving our messaging and improving our storytelling to our residents so that they feel as informed um, about things that are going on. And of course, engage senior leadership board members as well. From a, uh, from a mission standpoint, how do we actually achieve this? How do we actually help you connect and better engage with your quiet majority residents? We look to do this in two ways. One is well, in two sides of the coin as part of, our, uh, as part of our platform. First way is to look at organic chatter that our residents are already having about town related matters, village related matters, sorry, it's publicly available. So we'd connect to all uh, village related channels, local and social media that's publicly available, synthesize, aggregate and break down this resident feedback for you, and break it down into all the topics and departments that make up village hall. Anything from public health, public safety, sanitation, extreme weather, animal care, uh, parks and recs, you name it. 
And on top of that, we would then do a lot of sentiment analysis to give you a fundamental view as to how residents are feeling about things that are going on. And then uh, because we are local government exclusive, I know that sounds like a weird thing to say, but a lot of our staff members, particularly from a reporting perspective, do come from a public policy background. And so we do look to do a lot of reporting for you that's designed to be written in ways that senior leadership, whether it be uh, Dan or Jerry, anyone uh, in the mayor's office or board of trustees would like to understand resident impact accordingly. Um, common topics that we look to do is, yeah, as anything from village events to um, flooding event measures, which I understand is a pretty important topic for you guys, but particularly connecting with diverse communities. So we do translate from multiple languages as well. So, and, and the goal of that is to really help you hear from all pockets of the community and not necessarily just the, uh, the primarily English speaking community as well. Um, as mentioned, uh, this is all accessible in live dashboards, live feed what's going on. And then on top of that, we do look to do a lot of reporting. So our analyst team will periodically every couple of weeks, once a month, quite often tied to a board of trustees meeting right now, will prepare an insight report for you on an issue that you're really passionate about. And our, in, and our data analyst team will comb through the topics, the projects, go into it in a, a more fundamental core level and write up a report for you so you can see what the key issues are. Um, of course, this is not a one for one example, but this is just another small town that we work with in the Northeast where they faced a recent flooding um, incident. And we helped synthesize for the senior leadership what the main priorities were in the event of a recent flood. Was it utilities? Was it getting food supplies out there? Was it evacuation measures? Um, a highway closure was actually a big thing. So helping, helping senior leadership pro, uh, understand what the resident priorities were all in real time. This is a bit more uh, standardized local. So like when we're thinking of introducing bike lanes or re park redevelopment, you know, more day-to-day -day things that our local government seems to do helping understand resonant opinion and sentiment accordingly. And uh, of course- When you say you synthesize, can I ask a question? When you say you synthesize information, um, yes. my question is, if you have four people who, are, who comment in whatever, whatever it is, or 10 people, um, and six of them are in one, saying one, you know, the four and four of them saying against it, or, uh, or, or only the only comments are from four people. From what I'm seeing, you don't, you don't, I, I don't quite understand how that how that gets communicated and and how you in, in what you're what you're actually doing. That's what I'm not sure. Excellent question, and my apologies if I didn't explain that uh, thoroughly. Um, so yes, correct. If there's an issue. Um, and it's been discussed on a local news website or on social media, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And there are comments and we understand, like, let's just say there's a hundred comments, hypothetically. Uh, we will do sentiment analysis on each comment, et cetera, et cetera. Whether it's a comment, whether it's a like, whether it's a retweet, whether it's commenting on a comment. So if there's a hundred overall, and we deduce that there's 30 positive, 20 negative, and 50 neutral, we will showcase this for you. That on this particular issue, 30% are showing support, admiration, encouragement towards the initiative that's going on in the city. 20 are saying, eh, they're not so in favor. And here is the feedback, and here's the commentary, and here's the constructive criticism as well. And there's 50 more people, 50 more voices that are just asking more questions. What does this mean? How will this play out? Who will fund this, et cetera, et cetera. So there will be mutual comments as well. I'm not too sure if that answered your question, Mr. Natchez. It, it uh, does, but it, 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 you know, when you have a lot of people commenting, I understand the value. When you have very few people commenting, I'm not sure I'm not sure how that plays. That's what I'm that, trying to get to. You're leading me in perfectly. That's a perfect segue into the next part of the conversation. 
Uh, so there are obvious there, particularly for a community of around about 20,000 residents, there are probably um, topics or programs or events that you're personally passionate about, personally overseeing, that you would love it if residents were talking about this more. Um, and they're just not, it's just not the case, uh, whether it's something that that's only been discussed at the trustee level, so the re uh, residents don't know about it just yet, or it's just not a very popular topic in of it such. And so what we do on top of just the organic chatter is we do a lot of proactive outreach for communities. And this can be in the form of polls or, or short surveys. We call them community asks, where we ask uh, on a particular topic, stormwater drainage fee. What do you guys, what residents, what do you know about it? What are you most encouraging about it? What's the big thing that you wanna see change moving forward about this stormwater drainage fee? And so our survey research team will comprise a short poll or a short survey for you to start the conversation with our residents. Or um, for lack of a better analogy, I love to think of it as throwing a pebble in the pond and watching the ripple effect. And on top of that, uh, we, uh, we do have like a proactive outreach, like a civil engagement space where we can, um, in 27 different languages, publicize things that are going on within our community and actively encourage two-way resident communication to A, educate the public what's going on, but also to put out surveys, put out polls on um, certain initiative that's, uh, that's taking place. Classic example, if I can share, is what it is that we do um, for communities um, I know that ARPA was kind of briefly mentioned earlier in this, uh, in this Board of Trustees session, where we actually help uh, communities understand, ah, we've got $3 million to spend for ARPA. That's gonna be impact, that's gonna be filtered through the community in terms of programs. What are the main priorities that you look to see uh, go into that, in, into that 3 million? What, and, and then all, you actually can, in a weird way, almost tabulate how much you're thinking of spending so that you can actually get re resins to prioritize and rank and uh, plug and play to things that make sense for them. So it's a combination of educating the public, but also um, comprising active resident feedback on this, on, on this topic. I'm not too sure. That was a very long-winded answer to a very specific question, but uh, I'm not too sure, uh, trustee member, if that uh, helped clarify if I, um, or if I just raised a, a further questions, if that makes sense. I sort of understand. <laughs> yeah. Um, I will. I will emphasize that, like, uh, as part of our partnership, um, we uh, onboard all the relevant people that we need to within senior leadership of the community. And every two weeks, every three weeks, we arrange a catch up. Hypothetically, if it's with with Daniel or Jerry, uh, and then we showcase things that we're seeing in the resident feedback. We also showcase uh, best practices that we're seeing in other communities who are undergoing similar challenges or are thinking of developing similar initiatives so that you as the village don't need to reinvent the wheel. Ah, this is uh, from a cannabis moratorium example. This is what this particular community faced. This is how they approached it. Let us know what you think, take, take best practices or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, that's the... That's the beauty of uh, working exclusively with local government is that we uh, uh, see things quite frequently and are always happy to connect and share best practices as we as we as we as we come across similar things within your community. I I have a question. Can I? And I don't know sure. if I'm Sorry, interrupting, Nora. but um, so this is basically social media so you're it's not really the rest of the population it's the rest of the population that uses social media uh not quite uh and almost as in like we do leverage social media but we also tap into 311s or local news websites community message boards um and particularly from this proactive outreach we can use sms or qr technology um so that uh um, you know, residents who don't use mobile or desktop, et cetera, et cetera, um, can part actively participate in polls. And purely from like a... Um, um, how, how, would that, how would that work if you don't use... I mean, 
if you don't use social media, how would you how would you know to participate in a poll? Uh, we can advertise it on your website, in your uh, weekly newsletter, et cetera, et cetera, or you know, flag it on a meeting just like this, um, et cetera, et cetera, where to actively participate in polls or community outreach. Um, and purely from an accessibility perspective, I'm not too sure how many languages are spoken in, in the village, but our uh, pages can be translated into up to 27 languages based on the user's preferences as well. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, no, it's a very, it's a very valid point though. So I, it's, and my apologies if I didn't explain that uh, earlier on in the, in the conversation. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions or is there more presentation? Oh, I'm very passionate about what we do at Glen City. So I could take up till uh, 12 a.m. your time, but uh, I can only imagine you have more uh, other uh, resolution items to discuss. So yes. with, the, with the communities that you have identified that are similar to in population to Romantic, Correct. What have been the big issues or drawbacks uh, that have happened? Uh, in terms of like what, what their biggest challenges are from using the technology? What, what the biggest challenges are, how do you, um, you know, uh, I think Nora's question was, you know, if they don't do social media and you don't, you know, how do you contact them? Yeah, so that's what. Uh, uh, so if you, if you don't have their email. Ask an answer. And you don't, and you don't have social media, you know, the poll that you create it for a stimulus is fine to an audience that is there. Um, but so the question is, how have you overcome that in other communities or has it not been an issue? Uh, that's an excellent question. And so the page we're looking at right now is something super duper excellent to you. So uh, from the, what we call civil space, it's a relatively new initiative within Zen City. We recently purchased Ooh. a company called Civil Space that does yeah, proactive yeah. outreach yeah. to really, yeah. um, counterbalance these concerns that you mentioned, which are totally valid. And so even if you don't have email, even if you don't have uh, um, use yeah. social media, which you know, a lot of people don't, the, the goal of the proactive outreach is that, you know, all, all you'll need is a QR code where you hover over it and a photo and pops up and it takes you to a website, et cetera, et cetera. So this is accessible on any desktop, uh, you can a lot of a lot of cities actually link it to their city website as well. So residents who just per, uh, per, perusing your uh, uh, sorry village website can uh, easily see some of the um, active things that's going on within the community. Idea boards, engage other residents, and participate in surveys, etc. So you don't you don't have to have social media to participate. If that the short answer to the long to it's the short answer. <laughs> Yeah, I, I know that some members of the board don't uh, participate in social media and some do it very rarely, but I can, I, I can tell you, I, I do it a lot in just basically Facebook and a little bit of Twitter. And there are so many other uh, online uh, social media applications uh, that young people are now into uh, that it, it's real, it really is hard to keep up. And for me, you know, I find that it's, you know, it's a public uh, opinion bath every day. Uh, people give you constant feedback, positive and negative, and you can, you can assess it based upon, you know, uh, who, who's giving you the feedback. But you, could, you can, you know, get a tenor of what's going on. So, I mean, I, I understand the uh, usefulness of this because it really is, you know, it, it's it's the back fence of uh, society now. You know that that's that's where you know information gets passed. That's where opinions get formed. That's where concerns get voiced. Sometimes valid. Sometimes you know overwrought. But you know it, it, it. I don't know how you find out what's going on in a community if you don't really know what, what's going on over social media. So I I, I really do understand the utility of this for gauging what's going on on social media i'm not no, sure it's gauging what's, what's going on in the community because well, well, but, when but people but, have a concern in the let me finish Nora. when people have a concern in the community uh, Tom, go let, on, Nora, let nora finish please no she, she was she was no damn because she didn't understand what i said 
when, when, when people have a concern in the community, Nora, they go to Facebook or they go to Twitter to voice it. That's what I was saying. Go Tom, ahead. And Tom, what I'm saying is when some people have a concern in the community, that's where they go. That's not everyone. I so it was everyone. Well, you said when people. So all I'm suggesting, I understand what you're saying, but I think social media captures some of the residents. It doesn't capture all of the residents. And, right. And, it can, and, 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 and that isn't just in Mamaroneck. So there are some people who spend a lot of time on social media, and there are some people who spend a lot of time differently. This will, get, this will definitely get information from people who spend time on social media, but I don't know that it's gonna capture everybody in the village. And that's, I mean, that's really, I think we have to be straightforward and honest about how it gets evaluated. It gives us more information about some of the population, especially the populations who are active on social media. It doesn't give information to people who choose not to use it. And that's, or who don't use it on a regular basis. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, Lou wanted to say something. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Nora, I, my experience with social media has been that you need to cultivate the, uh, the audience. Um, uh, I started out very early with Twitter, and uh, got it up to about 15,000 or so uh, before I stopped engaging with it every day. And it's something you can create, you can create a, a, a community. That's, that's what, what that's this what will is. enable us to do, create a community that engages around uh, a, a, a co common goals. So yes, to begin with, it would be just like another, um, another social media, but you have to be skillful at working it and, and communicating it and creating that two-way communication because 90% of it is people just want to be heard. Uh, and if you, uh, and it's a way to listen to them. And it's an excellent way to, to kind of poll, not, not, not scientifically, but, but to take the temperature of things. Uh, if you, uh, you know, I used to see what the reaction was to a story mm -hmm. or listen to what people were chattering about or go back and forth with folks. And it was very helpful in, 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 uh, in um, doing that old job. And I think it would be helpful with us uh, in governing this village as well. So, Lou, I understand how social media works. I really do. Um, but my point is this product collects information about existing from existing social media accounts about the village. There are people in the village who do not participate in social media. I don't think this is going to get them to participate more. So what I'll so please. So all I'm suggesting is we're going to get information about a portion of the population, but we're not getting information about the entire rest of the village. So you have the 10 people who regularly come to board meetings. You have the other people who don't regularly come to board meetings who may watch. We don't know. It's on LMC TV. And then we will be getting information from that portion of our population who, who, who may or may not live in the village who are active on social media because you don't know always where you know, whether they live in Larchmont or Rye or Harrison or, or, or you know, a next door can be anywhere. So I'm, I'm just saying. Oh, pardon, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was curious as to whether or not this is geofenced. Uh, uh, is that what you, can you geofence it? Uh, was it the gentleman who presented? Mr. Shafir? Yeah, Mr. Sure. Shafir, you still there? Thank, thank you for the question. And I'll, I'll, I'll bring the two points together. Yeah. Um, uh, yes, we do use geofence. We do look at only localized sources for the village. So we're only looking at localized discourse within your community. We uh, do geofence or use a ge using a GIS layer of your community to really uh, localize resident feedback. Um, that's the first part of the question. Did that make sense before I go to the second part? Yes, it does. That's perfect. Um, I, I'd love to emphasize it's, uh, yes, social media is uh, inclusive as part of this, but it's not just social media. So from the organic perspective, we look at news websites, community message boards, city owned channels as well. So that would be your 311, uh, um, anything that's publicly connected that we can connect, we can connect. And then on the outreach perspective, it, you basically don't even require social media. You just, uh, you can use a SMS um, message uh, product, uh, come to a website, come to your page, et cetera, et cetera, and actively participate in surveys with or without social media. So I really did want to emphasize that, um, and, but I, I can clearly understand where that misconfusion might lie. But you know. one more question, may I? May I? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, another question I have is: is does this require um, uh, uh, man hours 
to operate. It seems like a lovely tool, but it, but but somebody's got to use the tool. I mean, uh, yeah. I, I mean, how, uh, how how does it work? So just to share what our basic partnership structure looks like, if we go live within about ten days of thumbs up. Um, in that period, the Zen City data analyst team does all the heavy lifting. Uh, we basically do the setup for you, find all the relevant channels, find all the relevant sources to connect, start to build these ID boards for you, and already start to do the basic reporting. Once we're good to go on day 10, we arrange an onboarding session uh, with uh, whoever takes the steering wheel on, on this team. And we basically just show you resident feedback straight away. Um, and then every few weeks, however way that you want to uh, best practice for your relationship is, is uh, we have a catch up every two to three weeks, month, once a month, just to share feedback that we're seeing in your dashboard, um, share the insight reports that we've prepared for you on topics that you guys choose. Um, so there's really very little uh, people hours on your side to actually get significant value out of this. Um, of course, we'd love to be embedded in Dan or Jerry's workflow where my best practice is uh, around about, let's just say you get to work at eight o'clock every day, 7.45, you might receive an SM, a message or an email from Zen City, which would summarize the key issues that have taken place or the key excitement factors from our residents overnight and what the big, to what the big ticket items, what the big to topics are um, that took place. That's how I, my best practice is in, in terms of uh, and I don't want to drag this out, but you've mentioned whoever takes the steering wheel, how much driving is required. That's that's right. Very, 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 very little. I mean, like the, the, uh, I presume it's Dan or Jerry. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, so, it's. So, John, if I received that email, like I do many other emails, I would read it and then I would forward it to the board of trustees so they're aware of what's so, what what those topics are. That that typically initiates an email back if they're interested to say, hey. Um, let's take a look at this at the next meeting or things of that nature. Spot on. So right. even to share like what this looked like, and, and I'm just trying to think of a flooding or stormwater issue where we actually uncovered a lot of work for, this is a city for again, Texas, pretty similar size too in terms of population, um, where we did a basic poll for them or basic insight request. And that started a conversation exactly how uh, Jerry just initiated and the Council said, oh, we'd love to go a little bit further. And we actually did a basic poll where in a community of yeah, about 28,000 residents, we did a quick survey and heard from you know, 550 residents on an issue, asked a few demographic questions about how they felt about the upcoming stormwater drainage fee, what they knew about it, got some live feedback as well. And then we contrast and going back to trust. Uh, um, um, trustee Lucas's point, we actually compared and contrast this as to what we were seeing on that organic dashboard on local and social media as well, and uh -huh. see if we it up as well. So we don't really, uh, uh, my best practice is to like look at it as an ongoing conversation on a specific topic to provide consistent resident feedback. But it, in your poll, in your example that you just gave, you're going back basically to most of the same people because those are the people who you can contact, not the people who have been able to, that are not on the boards or on social media. I, I think that's the question or, or the point Nora was saying, I'm not suggesting that the information isn't you know, helpful, but I, I think the question is, you know, what percentage of the population is actually you know, uh, responding? And that, that's one of the issues. But I do yeah, have another yeah. question, if I may. Sure. I, I don't. I don't know what geofence means. So, yeah. can you explain that to the novice? Sorry, that's a good point. I've been in. Uh, I've been in this role too long. Uh, so we look at a map of your village, and we basically just uh, isolate conversations within the walls of your city, if that makes of your village, if that makes sense. Yeah, but if you're on uh, social, if you're on social media, it, it's. I, I don't quite understand how geofence. If, I, if I'm on my phone and I'm on social media, okay, and I'm in my car and I'm in Harrison or I or whatever in another community, I'm still on social media. So using that specific example, if I may, um, one of the things that we'd like to do is like, if we have a GIS layer of your, of your village, we can identify what the, like, let's just say there's an east-south 
uh, east, west, south, north, as an example, we'd be able to identify what the key areas per different parts of your community are based on what people are saying about where, based on the language that they use in their comments and based where they might be posting from as well. So we can say, oh, in the north part of Mamaroneck, they really care about public safety. There's something that's taken place. In the south, it's an animal care related matter, uh, maybe a dog escaped home, something. And maybe in the east, it's their, uh, a pothole and they're talking about accessibility on the sidewalk, et cetera, et cetera. So we can help actually isolate what some of those main issues are based on the different districts of your of your community as well. Okay, yeah, um, I just I just want to get back to uh, utility. Sure. You know, I would say uh, an empirical observation. You know, under people under fifty are almost all on social media uh, in some form or another. But what I have found. And I'm, and I'm well north of that. But what I have found uh, is social media, even though everybody's not on it, a lot of times it'll drive the discussion about an issue and you'll hear people who aren't on social media talking about the topic because friends, neighbors, uh, family members have spurned the discussion because they, they, they saw about it on social media. So there's a multiplying impact. Now I, I know this because you know someone who's close to me is not on social media, and uh, I, I know that you know that I've had discussions uh, with that person, and they have told me, you know, well, so and so told me she saw it on Facebook or she saw it, although they're not on Facebook, but. I'm just saying that it's ubiquitous and just because a person isn't active on social media doesn't mean they aren't affected by social media because social media affects the whole social atmosphere anymore. You can't get away from it. Uh, it, it, it it's you know insidious in some ways pernicious in some ways, but it's here to stay. Mm. Uh, so I, I just, I, I think, listen, the question here obviously is, this is on the work session. And the reason it's on a work session is because do we want to pursue it in a regular, you know, at, at, at the board meeting and pass this? So, you know, I, let's get to the point where, you know, do you want it to move this forward or do you want to hold it off or do you want to not do it? because we can't talk about it all night. Trustee Natchez. Uh, Jonathan, can you tell me uh, how long you've been in business? Just a four on. Great question. Uh, we started out in 2016. Our first customer is the, was our, yeah. our first US-based customer was the, the city of West Sacramento, California in 2017. Okay, and have you ever had a community drop you after they've started with you? Of course, not everyone is a, no, not everyone can stay forever. So uh, just like we change houses sometimes or, or change cars. Uh, so it certainly does occur, but we have an extremely high retention rate, which is a lot of fun. Um, but I, I do want to emphasize that like we are local government exclusive so that like our whole analysis, our whole mission to drive value is totally thinking about the mindset of what's going on in local, pol in local government and to actually share feedback, share examples, share benchmarks uh, of what's going on within your community and other communities that we're working with so that you are generating as much value as possible. I'm not trying to emphasize ne negative, do not misunderstand me. Uh, I, I understand certain things that are of value here. Yeah. For those that have dropped, go to another <laughs> Uh, I assume you did. You would do follow-ups to try and find out why. Yeah. What can you give us insight well, as to get out already? What? No, it's it's a great question. Uh, I'd say that the he's smiling he's got a gun 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 may no longer uh, continue. Is budget? It's just something where COVID has struck and they've had to cut services. Sometimes, unfortunately, we've been on the chopping block okay. before. Um, it's a sad reality. Uh, we'd like to think that that's the case, but that's probably the 
major reason why someone has churned previously. Yeah, kind of like you guys. Uh, All right, th thank you, sir. Oh, I, 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 have, yeah, I have one more question. So, um, thanks. So, do you have other New York State clients? That's a great question. We just started in New York. Our, the community or community, the team that we work with in New York is actually the trans, the Mayor Adams Transition Office, NYC Speaks. Um, but we're very, very new to New York. So uh, we work with cities in Connecticut, Massachusetts, New Jersey, et cetera. Et cetera. Well, so my question is very New York specific and, um, and it has to do with um, public records. Perfect. And I see that this creates a bunch of, a bunch more public records and our village clerk and deputy clerk are here. And those are records we have to maintain. So Perfect. how is that, you know, I, I can see the FOIL request coming. So how, how, how easy is it to retrieve this information? Because we are creating a public record with, with what we collect and it's- Sure, everything we, uh, and this is a great question, everything that we collect is publicly available already. So we're basically taking things that are publicly available, aggregating, anonymizing it so that there's no PII, et cetera, et cetera. And we're just breaking it down into all the different topics and departments that make up Village Hall so that we can better synthesize and comprehend resonant feedback as that's already publicly available. And then we look to report on that accordingly. Um, so that, I don't know if that answered the question or if that answered a different well, question. I guess my question, Bob, Bob, Bob lit up. Um, is that going to be stuff that we're going to have to provide under FOIL when these reports come in? Well, that, I think, Nora, that probably depends on if this is a forum that the village creates and owns the information on, then the answer is yes. Uh, is that how this is structured? Um, could no. you please repeat? I'm not too sure I understood. So, the village, this is a forum that the village, the village creates. Does the village pay? If the village pays you a fee, I assume. You don't do this for free. Correct. It's not for free. Uh, yes. Yeah, so there's a fee associated with the partnership. Correct. So the village is at least is creating this forum based on your software. When you say forum, can you explain that uh, just so I understand? I well, guess place for making comments and aggregating. No. Comments no. And, Bob, 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 what they're doing is gleaning comments and trends from social media, existing social media. But they're doing it on behalf of the village. Right. It's probably village records. Yeah. So I. Uh, All right. So it's a record. Yeah. So okay. probably, have you come across this? Under yeah. It's, I mean, I've, for, uh, we've had four requests before. It's, yeah. I mean, the, the, the short answer is, is everything's already publicly available and everything's completely uh you can't like see anyone's person uh any individual's names even if someone's commenting as an example say hi i live at one two three smith street and i really don't like x y or z uh, you won't be able to see that within the zen city platform etc cetera, etc cetera. so but you're you're grabbing somebody i don't know whether we need to get into a debate on this or discussion yeah. this that tonight's video i think there are issues is is the simple answer. Yeah, uh, I mean, like it's come up, but like we've had or, uh, cities that we work, particularly in California, have had uh, four year requests before. And it's, uh, I don't mean to say that it's not an issue because it's, but it's the, the short answer is it's always like, here, here it is, it's already public available information. Mr. Shafir, you, you, you've answered very thoroughly and you've been very patient, uh, but it, it's getting on. And I, I have to ask my fellow uh, elected officials. Do you want this on for the regular meeting? Tonight. Tonight, because it's on the agenda for the regular meeting. What we're doing here is deciding whether to deal with it at the regular meeting. Well, aside from the fact that typically we don't put things on the work session and then do them the same night, that's that's we're doing that more and more, but that's not in our sort of rules and policy. I'm interested, I'm not interested in saying no, I'm not ready to vote on it tonight. I really want to learn more about it. I'm I'm I think. You know, I think there are tremendous benefits to it. I want to make sure the logistics really work, and that okay. um, we're going to capture the we're going to capture information that isn't just one portion of the population. So I'm I think you know it's a big decision, and I don't think it's a decision we make in one day. But. All right, Trustee uh, to Natchez. 
Um, I'd like more information. I'd like uh, the attorneys to try and figure out the FOIL issue because I can see that as a huge, a huge potential issue. Um, yeah, I'd like to have, you know, if we want to pursue this, I'd like to have staff talk to some of the uh, other communities uh, that are similar in size uh, uh, in, in Connecticut and find out the pros and cons from their view. Yeah, uh, Trustee Nash, as I did speak with uh, the chief elected officials from Guilford, Connecticut, and from West Springfield, Massachusetts. Uh, the uh, the mayor of uh, West Springfield is a heavy user of the system there. He uh, particularly uh, commented about the uh, the polling feature, which he's starting to use more and more. Uh, he commented that uh, you know he, he likes to you know see the the morning data as he enjoys his morning cup of coffee. So he usually spends about you know ten to fifteen minutes. Just as he's you know getting ready for the day, uh, and I think the uh, uh, mayor of uh, sorry the first selectman of uh, Guilford, Connecticut, uh, was similar. I think they, he's using it more for uh, understanding the social media uh, chatter as to the the major major issues in the uh, in the community. Okay. Um... Did we get a copy of the presentation? Would you can you send that? Uh, yeah, it's part of the work, it is part of the work session, Trustee Lucas. But we I can don't... I'll email it separately. I wait a minute. Yeah, it's a little work session. Back up. All right. You know why, why don't we put this? You know, Mr. Shafir, you, you've done an excellent job. We're going to ruminate on it some more, and uh, we'll hold this over for two weeks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Enjoy, enjoy your uh, evening. I guess you're ready to go to bed. Huh? It's morning. Ah, well, the, the coffee's kicking in, so I'll probably have a. Cam I'll have a mint tea to, to uh, <laughs> bring it down. Yeah, right. Exactly. Thank All you, right. sir. Well, uh, appreciate good luck for the meeting, and uh, I'll see you guys in two weeks. Okay. Thanks, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye. All right. Thank you. All right. What time is it? It is 623. Uh, that's not a referendum. Rent the registration program, Jerry. Um, Mayor, I worked on a draft I provided to our village attorney and deputy village attorney. Uh, they need some time, I'm sure, to take a look at it and tell me how terrible my draft is. But um, I'm sure they'll have something in a couple of weeks, if not four weeks from now. So I did present them with something. Bob and Mark, is that is that a, a reasonable well, time frame? I think the four weeks is is more likely, assuming your preference is that we work on the uh, proposal yes. by the HCZMC first. Yeah, I think that that's correct. I'll be right. All right, for four weeks. Dan has his hand up. Dan, go ahead. Um, I, I sent a note to you, Bob, uh, and I'd like in, in due diligence on this, uh, an answer on that, on those questions. Okay, I'm sorry, I must have. What was the, what, did you send it to the rest of us? I sent it on village email, email and copy to everybody. It was, a, it was like a couple of weeks ago, I think. Yes. Would, would you mind sending it again, Dan, just so I... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to try and find it and send it again. Uh, it had to do with what our existing code says and whether it was we need a new law or just... Oh, I remember this. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. yeah. Okay, sure. I remember. We talked about it last time. You know, but I'll, I'll, I'll resend that. Uh, nice. I cited the the issue and I, the way I read it, I think we may have not had the right information when we talked about it two weeks ago. Uh, okay, I've got a registration program. Zoning strategies, do, do, we, do we have any other information on this? No, oh, um, I did talk to... Uh... I did talk to our former uh, consulting planner, um, Mr. Neil Desai. He's with a new company um, because he switched over to a new company. Um, he does have time for us to start to work on uh, order for all affordable housing strategies, uh, zoning strategies that would include all affordable housing development. Um, and so he was going to connect with me in a couple of weeks. We had that conversation last week, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Yep. Are we getting a proposal from him as to what we would be doing and what the cost? We, 
we can. He's very new to his to his position, so he wanted to um, he wanted to run it by um, his employer to see if that was something that uh, they would be interested in taking on. But okay. everyone knows Neil. Everyone likes Neil, so that's why I'd reached out to him for that. Um, I, I, that I don't have a problem, but I, I you know um, it would be to find out what the cost would be versus and continuing with the five, which has all the other information. So. Yeah. Okay. Right, we six fifty. We're going to executive session, so let's try and uh, muddle through here. Uh, tree scholarships. We, we, so the uh, attorney general kicked it to, to the controller. That's correct. Is there a time frame on that? Um, no. Does the controller? Will the controller be able to parse the legal issue? It's a good question there. Um, well, the interesting part of this is, as you will recall, the, we asked the attorney general, specifically whether the attorney general's opinion from the 70s is still valid today. Um, I'd be surprised if the controller said, no, the attorney general's opinion isn't valid. But uh, you know, maybe they will. They, the controller's office does opine on expenditures, mm -hmm. so maybe maybe they will. I don't know. Who who actually sent it to the controller? Is there somebody in the attorney general's office who does local government, or there's the, a person in the solicitor general's office who's the chief of the opinions section? That's who sent it. And he didn't want to make an opinion. I think it's she, but yes, I. I I can't tell you what the motivation was. Um, I just know that she sent it. Okay, so is there a time frame or? No. There's no time, no legal obligation on the controller to respond. No. Do, do we know? Do we know who they sent it to in the controller's office? I don't think so. Okay. Is this the harder the question, the longer it takes? <laughs> okay. All right. All right, but it's, it's a shame, but hopefully we'll get an answer from the powers that be sometime in the future. Uh, wetlands we did with our friend, Mr. Burt. Uh, transfer roof station project. We, we don't have any information on it, do we? No, that's on hold. It's on hold. Is it, uh, okay, I'll, I'll ask you about that later. Uh, legal services agreement with Abrams Fensterman. W what is this about? Uh, that's just uh, renewing the agreement, same exact agreement uh, we entered into last year, Mayor. And it's expired? It expired, that's right. Okay. Does anybody want to discuss that? I, I, oh, I'm fine. I have a question. No, I have a question, just from the, question from the yeah, top of ahead. my head. Hello? What? I have a question from the top of my head. Bob, I know this. It's probably the same as the other contract. We can look at it now, but the, the, since the last year, we've done a lot of good work on, and this involves not just us, but the managers and his office and his staff uh, going to, to the insurance when, when needed and they'll, they've been covering that. So is there any modifications to the contract so that we're more in line with that? Because they have been assigning us certain counsel at some points. I think the other contract had had you directly as the council for everything. So anything, I, shouldn't we change that now that we are doing a little, things a little different? Well, I, I offer that as a question for everybody. Where insurance is paying for something, we've been working with the insurance companies. Mm -hmm. I think we have designated, I, I recall. I remember we looked at this last year and we went step by step. So I, I don't understand what the question is. The question is, I think we, 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 we assign the law firm as our counsel for all litigation, kind of as a blank. Any litigation that comes goes to Bob's office. But now we've, we've, we've changed that so that we first really run it to see if it's covered by insurance, make sure it is covered. And then if we do have to make uh, a decision as to whether there's a difference, we 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 uh we do that. So essentially, we've we've inserted one step in the middle so that we can 
so we can save uh, and lower fees. So I think maybe that should be reflective of what we're doing now. We're already doing that, Victor. When a matter is covered by insurance. But the contract says it goes to you directly. Let, let him answer the question, Victor. When a matter, I'm not charging the village more money than the village needs. No, that's spend. not the question. Let's, when the matter is, no is covered by insurance, we talk to the insurance company about who should represent the village. And if, the, if we want to represent the village at, at, and the insurance company wants us to represent the village, we do. If they want to assign somebody else, they assign somebody else. At the insurance rates? At the insurance rates. Okay. Is that in the contract? Let's check. Let's insert that. I don't know if it's in the contract. We've been doing that for years. Okay. Well, let's, that's, that's what I'm offering just to see if we can improve what we've been doing because I think there's a lot of work. And of course, it involves you being helpful on, on trying to, to, to do this so that we can go even go back. You know so anyway, I think it's I'm been no a idea. great effort and I want this to be reflective. I can take a look. Let me open the contract as you, maybe others have questions. I can, I can open this up. Just pop up. Let me see. Let's see. Can, I, can I just, I have a general question. Yeah. Couple things, if I can do that while Victor's looking. Go ahead. One was nine other clients. Um, the attorneys will not represent any other client before any department, um, board, or commission of the village during the term of this agreement. And I think um, having spent a lot of time with the ad hoc ethics committee because I was hosting their meetings, ad hoc ethics review code review committee, um, it maybe that should be. The, maybe the lawyers, like everybody else in the village, has to wait two years. I, I think that might be consistent. So That's anybody right. who's got any affiliation with the village has to take a two-year hiatus before appearing before the village. I, I um, think that that's covered in the ethics code correct. because the village attorney is an official of the village and the ethics code says all officials of the village. Well, but it's, but the contract just but, says during the term of the agreement. I mean, oh, I'm just, code that, says what the ethics code says. Okay. The ethics code just says during the term of the agreement? No. It so has you would have so you'd have to same, wait two years. Same period that applies to everybody else. Yes. Okay. okay. So this is this is just this is just saying you can't do it while you're working here. That's right. Okay. Okay. Thanks. I remember that from when we did the ethics code. We're back when I was young. Oh, what was when we wrote the ethics code, it was like 2009. Right, is there, is there, it sounds to me like what Victor's advocating for is already the case. Well, let, let, let me, let me finish that. Uh, I think I, because I found it, uh, let me share that here. So I think it's here eight. Um, so I'm not asking you to change anything, Bob. I, I, I know you do it properly. No, but in, no. as, as just so that it, it continues to improve, just to spell it out, you say we'll represent the village unless the board of trustees, and we, we say um, you know, at the same rate of the insurance or as, as, as however you want to frame it. But I, I, would, I, would, I would suggest uh, or ask that we include, spell it out here. Because for example, I didn't know we were proceeding that way. I, I just... Yeah. Um, and it has it has been an eff, a tremendous uh, effort now, and I think we're all better off how things are being handled now. So let's spell it out. It's my suggestion. I don't know However, you want to draft out. it. I don't know how to spell out what you want spelled out. I don't know what you spell, want spelled out. It is that you will, that you will charge us? You say you, here you're representing us in all litigation, and we you have the fees up 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 above. I don't recall. I think it's three fifty. Whatever. I don't recall. But. So here we're just designating you automatically back for everything. And we're, we're, we're not saying what you explained that it will be at the rate that the insurance, cover, uh, insurance uh, covers. Let's go Thank back. You. If my logic is right, let me see. Let me see. All right, let me see. Okay, so we have nature retainer, personal services. So this is non-retainer. That's probably where we have litigation is somewhere. Let me see fees. Is that steam or smoke? I see coming out of here. 
here. Non return of services. So fees is like a 350, right? That's right. Or it's, we'll say, and it, it doesn't spell out that it goes to the insurance. Let's say if the fee for the insurance is 300, that that will be the rate you cover. It's not, it's not spelled out. That's what I'm asking. You can always decide, I, I, can always I think, decide otherwise then. I, I think what with, with the point here is when, when you were assigned by the insurance company, you'll accept the insurance company's rate. Oh. Isn't that the case? What we're talking about here? Yep. I think the name mayor has. It. Yes. This, let's say they say three hundred, or that's a rate. It'll be three hundred, not three fifty. When it, when they were signed, but when, when they're being paid by the insurance company, yes, yeah, so left so the insurance yeah, company. The case rate. when the, right, when, when when Bob is covered by the insurance company, correct? I'm sure I'm not. I know he's doing it, but I want to spell it out. Bob, is that okay with you? Sure. <laughs> can, can, can you send a contract with that change, please, for the next meeting? Sure. Oh. Thank you. Anything else? Let me see. Uh, let, let's get to the stuff that's on for tonight. Go down to new business. Well, did Victor, I think Victor was starting to say something else, but. Oh, Do you have anything else? I don't... Thank you, Victor. Uh, uh I did, but okay. oh, go ahead, Laura. I'm sorry. Go ahead. So, um, I think that you know we're that um, in number oof, it's three, two, four. Um, it says provide legal counsel and services related to labor and employment matters when requested by board of trustees and or the village manager. I don't think it should be and or. I think it has to be and. Like it has to be both of us agreeing. I think that's what we had. That's what I thought we were agreeing to last year on the and or got in there. So I think it should just be and. So there's like a, a double check because it is more expensive. Um, so if the village manager calls and wants to ask us a quick question about yeah. a labor matter, he has to bring it to the board of trustees first. Is that what you want? Well, I mean, I guess the question is maybe over an, an amount. I mean, maybe over an amount because we do have labor council, a separate labor council. And, and, yours, and, your, and your rate is higher than their rate, basically. So I don't know if he calls for a quick question, it's gonna be you know a portion of an hour or whatever. And that's one thing, but I, I'm just trying to make sure we are watching those tax dollars. Whatever you want. All right. Let's move on to uh, new business that has to be done tonight. Uh, Southeast Consortium spelled wrong, uh, but it's, it is Consortium. Uh, if you don't know what the Southeast Consortium is, the Southeast Consortium uh, is an amalgam of uh, communities around here from Port Chester down to Pelham uh, that have banded together to provide recreational services uh, for people uh, with disabilities. Uh, people from disabilities obviously, with disabilities obviously deserve recreational services and it's a heck of a lot cheaper if we do it uh, as a group than each community uh, has to do it on their own. Uh, this is located in the town of America headquarters so it's, it's very convenient for us. And this is just a renewal of an agreement that I don't know, the village has been a uh, party to for, you know, 40 years. Uh, any questions, concerns? No, I think it's a great service at a great price. I think it's very important, but question was this, Jerry, was this in the budget? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Okay. 40 years. In the budget. We put it in the budget every year. No, I just, I, I, I just want to the, have that pointed out. Thank you. Yeah, you. sure. Uh, engagement letter for bond council. So Mr. Fusco, this is your Ballywick. Uh, I, 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 correct me if I'm not wrong. This is the same council. He's moved to a different firm. Uh, yes, from sole proprietor, he's now entered an agreement with a company. And he now is part of a company. They're maintaining the same fees 
per engagement. So, so it's just we're changing the, the, the name on the contract. That's correct. The rates are the same? The rates are the same. And we don't have any problem getting out of the old contract? He was a sole proprietor. He merged oh, with a company. Oh, OK. Perfect. I'm sure he'll let himself off the hook. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> uh, everybody OK with this being on? Yeah, sure. Well, you didn't know you had a belly week before tonight, did you? No. OK. Uh, purchase of one 2022 Ford Escape. Uh, Jerry, you want to talk about this or, or, or Dan? I'm sorry, Mayor, but Mr. Sarnoff wants to talk about this. Mr. Sarnoff? Yes. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Barbario. Uh, <laughs> one of the items that's in our capital budget is a replacement of a vehicle for the building department, uh, actually two vehicles. Uh, what we're proposing is to turn down the vehicle, which is currently assigned to me, which is a 2015 uh, Chevy Equinox, which was originally assigned to the uh, building department. Uh, and uh, assign this new vehicle to me, and I'll turn down my vehicle, or back, sorry, that vehicle, not my vehicle, uh, to the building department for their use. Uh, it's going to replace a, uh, I believe, a 2014 Ford Escape, which has been plagued by transmission gremlins, uh, has very little value left at this point. And, uh, you know, the Chevy Equinox uh, is in very good shape, if I do say so myself, in terms of its. Uh, of its maintenance. Okay. Um, Any questions or concerns? No. no. Okay, thank you, Dan. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. To be upgrade of multi-space parking meters on for regular meeting. Uh, Mayor, um, starting on uh, April 15th um, and up to May 15th is our timeline to install the new multi-space meters on the Boston Post Road. Uh, it, it has come to my attention that we are plagued with problems on the um, existing multi-space meters because they were converted from one company to another or from one uh, um, um, instrument panel to another. And so at times, many times, we have these uh, multi-space meters go down uh, where they won't accept uh, coins, they won't accept um, the credit card, uh, and so what I discussed with uh, Chief Simpson was to upgrade the existing um, uh, parking uh, multi-space meters. We have 15 of them, uh, not upgrade, but completely renovate those parking uh, multi-space parking meters um, with new ones. Uh, we're using, and Dan will help me with the, we're using the fund, the trust fund that we have for this. Um, which has 267 or $268,000 in it already. And so what we'll do is we'll be able to upgrade um, our existing and we'll have the whole, all, all the same technology, all the same equipment, and we'll be able to um, ensure for the most part that we're not missing out on parking fees when these multi-space meters, the older ones, the ones that were converted in the past, um, continue to break down. Okay. So you hit. So can, can I ask a question? Okay. How old are the old ones? They're not that old, right? The conversion, the conversion is maybe, uh, I think, four or five years old. But when we converted it, apparently, that may not have been the best approach. Best okay. So. I thought we in, we only installed them like in two thousand and. I think it was 2014, 2015 when we originally purchased them. Right. But they, they've been in operation for, you know, eight years, eight, seven, eight years at this point. Uh, I mean, even under the best of circumstances, their useful life is about 10 years. And that's, you know, assuming you got it at the beginning of the that generation of parking meter. But uh, okay. with conversion, it was kind of like putting the proverbial uh, square peg in a round hole. So, um, what what saves us, uh, Nora, is a little bit of redundancy. We have two meters in one location. Mm -hmm. So if one goes yeah. down, the other one, yeah. uh, we'll maintain that. But, um, you know, people have, and the judges typically send me um, uh, the, <clears throat> the request to evaluate uh, the meters from, from residents and non-residents yeah. uh, when they get a ticket and oh. they can demonstrate. 
that the meter was not Wasn't working. working. And the that's easy. Picture. It's easy yeah. to do, right? No, I know yeah, that. I mean, it's that's, easy to do. It's easy to do. And I, I get, I get those, uh, I get to make those calls based on the information I have, which of course, Tommy um, does the research for me before it comes to my desk. So basically one of the things we have to consider is we have to be on top of a replacement schedule for parking for the multi-space meters. Yeah, um, I think because it's outside, I think because it's electronic, I think because it's, it's you know, we're, we're not a um, typical North Carolina, Georgia kind of weather. Um, I'm sure that uh, a lot of that impacts. You know, I, 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 noticed, I noticed in Rye and in other communities, they're it's in like a, a little kiosk that you walk yeah. into. They cover it up, right? They cover yeah. it up to give it a little shelter. They give it a little shelter, and you know, at least you know when you get your wallet out and you go through your pockets, it's not raining on you. We talked about that. We talked about that, and that's something we may, we may want to look into. Um, that we would purchase and install ourselves. We did okay. look into that. Okay. Uh, have and we that, looked at more than one company uh, for this? Because if, if what we're hearing is what I'm hearing is that we. You know, we have an obsolescence factor and you know there must be more than you know there must be several companies right. specialized i would say in the northeast but we're married we're married to this company um that we have to um continue with their with their program um because the new meters that we just got were from were from the company so what we're trying to do is we're trying to make sure that the 23 that are out there are all the same so that we can uh, rely on the connectivity and also that staff is um, able to use them. It's probably not something we should shop around for and have different types all over the village. Yeah. I mean, I, I've looked at pricing in the past and the, the IPS meters are, are typically less expensive than some of the others I've seen from, it's now it's called T2 or Parkion or Schlumberger. So it's... Uh, but Dan, you, the, these, are on, these are on the national purchasing thing, right? Yeah, that's yeah. correct. The uh, okay. NCPA contract. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, this is on for regular meeting. Everybody's final putting this on? Yep. Okay, me too. All right. Thank you, staff. Uh, I'm going to make a motion that we go into executive session for the following items. So consider this my motion. Uh, tax search area 311 East Boston Post Road uh, under section 105.1D. Uh, village manager performance review uh, 2020-21 under section 105.1F. Appointments to the Marine Education Center Advisory Committee under section of the code 105.1F. And canvassing of police officer civil service list uh, under the Public Officers Law Code 105.1F. And just for a point of order, we're going to do uh, the police officers first so that uh, Chief DeRuza can go home. So, so I, make, I make that motion. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Matches? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Or oh, could you get us on here? Mayor? Yes, sir. I have a, uh, Dan, did we get the public safety customer service tool on the agenda? Because I have the, uh, I have it's the information there, but from Chief Druza. Huh? Yeah, it's item 2F. It's the top of the uh, the second page of the cover of uh, the agenda. Is that on regular or is that just the chief? Uh, I think it was just on this because I, okay. I don't okay, think fine. it wasn't where the other. Sorry, thing. sorry, Mayor. I don't no want problem. to get the chief upset. You know how she no is. <laughs> she has a gun. <laughs> All right. See you. In, see ya.
We heard from President Bill. doing Dan? Doing good. How you guys doing? All right. Good to see you, Andre. Good to see you. Hello, sir. Uh, who are you calling, sir? I'm just calling me Dan. <laughs> or maybe <laughs> that uh, Chief Barney. You call him, sir. <laughs> Andre, don't call me, sir. You know, wouldn't <laughs> crazy. Uh Barney. Yes. Yes, sir. You see that guy? You see that guy in the photograph there? He's the Which coolest one? president. He's the coolest president oh, in the world. Ukraine? Yeah. That guy is he's suits pretty, up uh, and he's ready to go. No limousines he, for that guy. No, definitely not. Hi, Andre. Hello, sir. How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing sorry. good. All right. Dan, you look eerie. Well, oh, yeah. Oh, no, no, it's just. I know, it's. <laughs> Looks like a special effect. Well, you know, I, I got to have a, a better picture than you know, my my bed and my dresser in the background, and uh, I had to move my camera around a bit because uh, I can't have all my special lighting on right now. You got to lower the intensity of that lighting. You look like a ghost. Well, the thing was, I, I usually have my regular my ring light on, but because I had my uh, eye exam today and got my eyes dilated. Oh. I turn the ring light on. I'm gonna, I'm gonna blind myself. You don't do that. No. So it was a, what was it? I had the blood work done, then the eye exam. Then I get to go back to wound care tomorrow. Fun, fun, fun. Visiting, you're visiting a lot of doctors these days. A lot of doctors. Well, and then the optometrist told me to go to a doctor, a, ret a retina specialist. So, mm. so thankfully, I, I count myself lucky to have very good health insurance. Yep. And is on. Recording in progress. Yes. 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 Yes.
Fairly sad. Okay, got that. Okay, we have Victor. We have Chiquani. No, Stan Nazizo. What's up, Nazizo? Uh, not yet. Yep, here okay, you go. Okay, yes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Old gang is here. Lovely. Uh, good evening. And uh, welcome to the Board of Trustees. A uh, regular meeting for February 28th, 2022. Uh, before we get started, I would like the motion to end the work session. So moved. Second. Nor is seconding. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Since we have the ayes have it. Um, thank you. Uh, please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. Aye. Aye. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. Uh, first item on the agenda is adoption of the agenda. Someone like to make a motion. Mayor, you need to open the meeting, please. Would someone like to make a motion? Well, then, Hold well, on. I had to mute this before. What are we doing? I had to turn the volume on. Okay. Sorry about that. Sorry. Might be me. That's not me. Sound check. We're good. Okay. All right. I'd like a motion to adopt the agenda. So moved. Second. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? No. Uh, okay. The next Mayor item on the agenda. You well, need to open the meeting, sir. Oh, geez. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. My, my mistake. I got ahead of myself. I need a motion to open this meeting. So moved. So moved. Okay. Second. Okay. Second. okay. All Second one. you. Uh, aye, aye. All right. All right. Sorry about that. Uh, the next item on the agenda are presentations. And the first presentation I have to do tonight, I hope you could all see this lovely presentation. And it's to one of our employees, uh, Andre Powell. And I'm going to read it. Whereas the village of Mamaroneck, since its establishment in November 16th, 1895, has been blessed with leaders who have dedicated themselves to improving and advancing the betterment of all. And whereas, while many of these leaders are well known, many others serve in less obvious but equally important ways to enhance the quality of life in our friendly village. And whereas, one of these individuals is Andre Powell, who answered the call of service to the Mamaroneck community as an employee of the village five years ago, originally hired as a laborer in the parks department, and now employed as an employee of the sanitation department. And whereas Andre Powell is a member of the Powell family, who have given so much to the residents of the village through their generational service within a straight gate church, a ministry in which both his grandfather and uncle have served as spiritual leaders. And whereas Andre Powell, is the latest exemplar of this family commitment, having recently gone above and beyond the call of action, risking his personal safety by preventing a young child from being hit by a vehicle on Beach Avenue. Therefore, I, Mayor Thomas A. Murphy, on behalf of the residents of the village of Mamari, hereby express our deep gratitude to Andre Powell and convey to him the esteem by which he is he held by his fellow employees and thank him for his selfless action. Mr. Powell, 
Thank you very much. Uh, I know you and I run into each other uh, on, a, a, on a weekend morning when you're out uh, doing your job and I'm out enjoying a bagel. Uh, <laughs> You 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 are you're an energetic hard worker who always has a smile on his face and a kind word for everybody. What you did for this child, uh, you know, is, is is an example of the great employees that we have in this community. And I thank you from the bottom of my heart. And uh, as I'm sure the parents of, of that child do, uh, yes. we have a lovely plaque here for you. Sally will have it for you whenever you're ready. And uh, if you'd like to say a couple words, that'd be fine. No, just thank you so much, and um, I'm glad I was there to help. And um, yeah, he's a good kid. Thank you, my friend. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, good work, Danny. Thank you. And all and right, we'll have this for you, and, and a little something extra in the envelope. I heard. <laughs> that season's over. That season's over already. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. All right. Everybody have a great night. Right, have a good night. Bye, Andre. All right. Okay. And the next item on our agenda is a presentation from our fine fire department. And we have uh, another employee, but uh, also a fire chief, Chief Barney here. Hello, Chief. Hello, how are you? How's everybody doing tonight? Good, sir. Um, I'm, I'm hoping that you all have the uh, slideshow that I had sent, uh, had asked Sally to send out on um, Friday afternoon. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, so um, at the council meeting last week, uh, we as a company, Columbia Engine Hose, requested the fire department to allow us to um, start building what will be the next replacement fire engine. Um, and we selected a company, which will be the same company that, um, that Mamoro, the current engine 40, that's due to arrive in the next several weeks, um, Seagrave. So the council approved us to start the process of building, which as you know, as a board now is a long and long and drawn out process from, you know, uh, starting to find it and you know piece together what you need and what you don't need and, and weed through the whole the whole build process so um uh mr barbario asked me to put together this presentation just a quick four slide show um to explain what we're planning on doing um just so you have an idea you know we're not we're not trying to uh you know, spend a substantial amount of money in the next six, six weeks. You know, this is, as you know, it takes a long time for this to happen. So we wanted to start with this. Um, at first, we'll just, the, the first, the second slide is, um, as you see, it's just a list of the committee members. Um, as you can tell, it's, it's a pretty substantial group of people that are in our company, um, mostly past chiefs and uh, three captains that are currently our most active drivers. Hey, Chief, um, just, I'm rep. sorry, I, I, I just forgot. Which, which house is this for again? This is Columbia on uh, Barry Avenue, Barry and Jefferson Avenue. Okay, thank you, I'm sorry, I, I just I missed You're welcome. That. That's okay. Yeah, that was on the first slide, but actually we, we kind of scrolled past it. But um, if we go to, um, that's just a list of the committee members. We go to the third slide, um, just some basic information. Um, there's a NFPA, which is the standards of all firefighting, suggests that an apparatus at over 20 years old be removed from frontline service. Um, as of today's date, our current engine 41 is now 25 years old. Um, we, we have uh, 5,539 5, engine hours on the, on the motor. Now, while we don't drive it around town, Matt, you know, we're not, we're not constantly putting miles on it like a sanitation truck or a salt truck, um, but the just engine idling miles, uh, engine idling equivalates to more miles. So the amount of hours that are on that, on that vehicle are equivalent of 300, over 330,000 miles on that truck. Um, and on average, this, this piece of apparatus is going to 500 alarms a year. So it's a very active piece of equipment. It's one of the first new apparatus to the throughway. Uh, should there be an accident, it, it houses uh, one of our jaws of life um, tools. 
So it is a very active piece of equipment. So, Chief, how do you gauge engine hours? So uh, the Department of Transportation has an equivalent to um, one engine hour is uh, equivalent to, to putting 60 miles on the vehicle. Uh, I, no, I, understand, I understand that, Chief, but how, how do you measure engine so the, hours? The, ve the vehicle actually has a gauge, just like a mileage gauge. Gotcha. It, okay. and any um any diesel uh piece of equipment also has a engine hour meter on it. Okay, thank you. I didn't know that. Yeah, because because diesel diesel trucks on average can go two three hundred thousand miles. You know, a diesel pickup truck can last a very long time. But a lot of these larger pieces of equipment aren't doing road miles, but they're running for long and long periods of time where they're still getting beat up just as if they were driving over the road. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. We can go to the uh, next slide. So in 2011, there was a presentation given um, when we needed to replace one of our ladders. Um, and it, it, it coincides with that every 20 years that something should no longer be a frontline piece of apparatus. Um, we purchased one of the ladder trucks in 2010. This was a presentation that was given um, so if you see, if you go to the actual next slide and we can, we can kind of go back between the two of these, you will see that this is where we're currently at in 2021. So if you, if you lose the engine 40 from the middle, engine 41 would be the next pumper to be replaced in that 20, that uh, 20 year span. Um, since that ladder was purchased in 2010, the every five year thing for the most part has been has been being followed and we are setting ourselves up for success. Um, the problem that we're having now is just like with everything else, lead out time on deliveries are now up almost to two years. So if we delay the process of ordering the equipment, we won't see it for several years to come. And that would now if, if, we don't, if we don't move forward with the next piece of equipment in say the next six to eight months, just putting a purchase in, not necessarily buying it and spending the money right away, but at least putting a purchase in, by the time for the new engine 41 would come in, we would be, we would be almost 30 years old the vehicle. So if you bounce back from the other slide to where we are now, we are definitely in the right, we're definitely spacing it out so that the next purchases aren't all on top of each other, but we're still trying to catch up to where we were trying to put ourselves in 2011. <clears throat> Are there any questions on that timeline? No, I got it. I have a question, uh, Mayor, I have a question for um, Chief Barney. James, did we talk about um, replacing engine 39 with one of these other two engines at some point or will that remain the spare yeah so i i i don't know what um chief cost or the or the council's current plan is okay. but usually usually as one gets purchased it becomes a spare till the next one gets purchased and becomes a spare okay and so on if 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 it's if it's feasible if the if the vehicle is so far gone then it can't be but um Okay. That's always that's always on um, the you know the forefront <laughs> of, of the mind while they're moving through the process. Okay. Uh, we, we, we can go to the next slide. <clears throat> so current engine 41 was built in 1997 by RD Murray, who is current currently no longer in business. Uh, they were bought out by another manufacturer. Um, it's a Spartan gladiator cab and chassis. It's an all aluminum uh, body and it holds 500 gallons of water. It is a 1500 gallon per minute uh, pump. It also has the jaws of life on it. <clears throat> you can go to the next one, please. And then just, uh, this is just a projected timeline um, of what our process seems to be. Uh, based on the build of engine 40, um, we actually started looking at apparatus as a, as a group 
from our company back in October um, when we started to see the, the lead out times on deliveries uh, go over the full 365 days. Um, it wasn't until um, last month that we decided there was really only one manufacturer that we wanted to go with because they're the only ones that present an all stainless steel body from top to bottom. So we chose to go with Seagrave, who is, it kind of made the, the decision a lot easier for us because they're the only ones to offer it. So it, it, it's not really too much else to look at. Um, given the conditions here and the weather, nothing else really seems to be holding up in the Northeast for, for the amount of time that we're keeping equipment. Yeah. Um, and if you, uh, you know, the rest of the timeline, obviously I'm presenting tonight, um, as a committee, we would, we would hope to have something to, to present to the board in um, late August or September. Um, and then obviously from there, we would, we would hope that we could choose to move forward. And as I said, there over 570 day lead out time from a contract. If a contract was executed next month, it would be 570 days before you saw that delivery. And um, obviously everything's just getting worse and worse just because of the backlog. So even if we approve, if you guys were to approve something in September, you wouldn't see it till March of 2024. Okay. Uh, Chief, I just wanna, I, I don't remember, when I was with the town of Mamaroneck, uh, we ordered a fire truck and uh, they had to cancel the order. Uh, the fire truck was, I don't know, the chassis was askew. Uh, I, I just check with the town of America and just see. I, I don't remember which manufacturer it was. It was, it was, uh, it was KME. Okay. All right. All yeah, right. So you know about it. We're, yeah, we're all aware of that. It drove down the street sideways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, a, like, a, like a 1920s movie. Mm. Yeah. Okay. We, I just want to we have sure. we have a truck. We have a truck that drives down the street sideways, but it's supposed to. Okay. Okay. I just wanted to make sure you knew about it, and we didn't, you know, yeah, fall into that same problem with the same manufacturer. Yeah, we're aware. All right. Thank you, Chief. Thank you. And I think that's it. We uh, so we put that together. Just we wanted the board to to be aware um, that we are out there looking, and we are out there. Um, trying to obviously put together the best thing to protect the village. And um, we wanted to make sure you're just aware of all of our steps so that no one was taken off guard if they were to hear about it from anyone else. Thank you, Chief. I really appreciate the heads up. Uh, is, Thank this, this is obviously on your capital plan, right? I believe so. So, so Mayor, the, the five-year five rotation is not potentially not specified, but that's uh, something that we've um, followed um, in the village for a while now, based on that chart that Chief Barney was able to, to show. Okay. And, and I know uh, there's, there's long lead times now because of COVID slowdowns and stuff like that. I, I, I'm sure fire engines, like everything else, uh, uh, microprocesses and everything else, and I mean, it's, it's getting harder and harder to find uh, parts and chips uh, so I, I understand the, the, the question. Part. A question I had of the fire department the other night was um, if the city of New York puts in an order for 100 fire trucks and we put in the village of Moranic puts in one order, why wouldn't they or do they get priority? And the way it was explained to me is they work on municipal fire trucks then they'll work on a, on a, uh, um, a city fire truck every third truck that they're doing, they would work on the city fire truck. So everyone gets in line, just that the city has more spots in the line than municipal um, municipal orders. So oh, it, it makes sense, right? The city must be buying a hundred trucks a year. Yeah, the city buys a lot, and and we don't get pushed aside because the city has a big order. And I thought that that was uh, an interesting point that I didn't know. I, I didn't know ordering other trucks in the past. I didn't know that. So that's great. Chief, is there anything else we need to know about this apparatus? Uh, not at this time. Obviously, once we put uh, once we put together what we're what we need to store our equipment, 
and um, to be comparable to what we currently have, we will uh, come to you and present it, and you will you will see the uh, you will see the plan. Okay. Uh, anybody else have any questions or concerns uh, for Chief Barney about this presentation? Okay. Uh, Chief, I just want to point out to, for the uh, watching and listening public that uh, Chief Barney uh, is a longtime village employee and uh, he has uh, filled the role of uh, acting DPW uh, foreman uh, since uh, a longtime DPW foreman has been ill and uh, he's going above and beyond the call of duty and he's done an excellent job and we appreciate your efforts. You're welcome and, and thank you for the acknowledgement and thank you all for your time tonight. Good night, Chief. Good night. Good night. Bye. All right. <coughs> Pardon me. All right. Uh, the next item up is uh, communication to the board. And I, I just want to explain before we start communication to the board, uh, is a five limit five minute time limit on communication to the board. There's a communication to the board at the beginning of the meeting here, another one at the end of the meeting. Uh, if you're talking about a, a item on the new or old business, it's a three minute time limit. If you're talking about the audit of the bills, it's a five minute time limit. And this is true, whether you're an ex-mayor of the village of Marinick, uh, my child or anybody, those, those are the rules. Thank you. So can we please start with Mr. Tippett? I got it. I got it all right. Hi, Glenn. Unmute yourself, sir. Good evening, uh, trustees. Uh, number one, was anything decided in executive session that needs to be announced? Had that been the case, I would have announced it. Okay, because I did see uh, directors... Um, boatyard on there for their uh, sir sorority and uh i'd like to you know at one point well i'll wait but we know we know that that's going to be a large number uh the town of Marnick had another sir sorority go through um last week and that's going to cost us another nineteen thousand. uh good evening i hope everybody is having a good day uh, good news on the COVID front. We're down to uh, 1,100 uh, testing positive. We're under 2%. We're down to 1,800 in the hospital, and we're down to 336 in ICU. So over the last two weeks, we've really gone in the right direction, and hopefully by April, May, it'll be behind us, and you can see me in person. I'm looking forward uh, to that. <laughs> yeah. A couple, couple, couple of items. Um, <clears throat> with the uh, fire truck, not only it's five, 570 days until they deliver it, but then usually we send it over to Excalibur and they add all the extra bells and whistles that the truck needs. So, you know. It might, it might be another 30 days before you can even put it into service. I'm glad that uh, Jerry called up and um, spoke to the fire department. I mentioned it at the last meeting. A lot of equipment has a lot of lead time. So hopefully, you know, all the heads of all the departments uh, have discussed it with the village manager. And, you know, we can make sure that we're getting our equipment in a timely manner uh, realizing that we have the new lead time. Uh, uh, time is over. We're discussing, the, we're discussing the new budget. Fortunately, I missed the beginning of it. Um, was there uh, any discussion about where we sit with this year's budget? <clears throat> because I, I see that you did make the... Um, you are going to be making the adjustment for the police overtime. And there's a number of items that need to be adjusted on the budget that we know are going to be up. The sales tax is probably going to be up six to 800,000 over what we expect it to be. But we have a, a the mortgage tax is probably up. The tenants was up over 100,000. 
there's some items that are up that are offset. We've collected a million dollars worth of insurance recovery, but unfortunately, most of that is a expense that came, I would assume, 80% from, um, uh, from Ida. And um, <clears throat> yeah, so that would be an offset. And then we, we uh, got a good amount of money from CHIP. And that would be for past capital projects. So that is gonna that is going to be a cash through our budget. At some point, Augie is going to uh, charge whatever the capital project is, and you're going to see the chips money come in off on the other side as an expense. On the downside, we have uh, metered parking, which is probably going to come in somewhere about one hundred fifty thousand dollars less than we budgeted. We have Harbor Island parking, which is about 80,000 less than budgeted. We have the beach, which is $50,000 less than budgeted. We have the pavilion, which is about 70,000 less than budgeted. We have fines and forfeitures, which is gonna be probably about 100,000 less than budgeted. Permits is coming in light. It could change uh, in the future. So I, I will write up and send in those items. And then on the expense side, you have one major one, which is the um, hospitalization and health coverage, which is going to need $150,000 judgment. It went up as a uh, January uh, 1st significantly. So with the payments that we have left, we have um, April and May payment left. Uh, we're going to need approximately Eight hundred and ninety-nine thousand dollars, and we got seven twenty-three in the budget thank, for. Th thank you, Blend. Okay. Goodbye. Have a good evening, my friend. I'll, I'm sure I'll speak to you later. Thanks, Glenn. Okay. Uh, there are no public hearings tonight. Yeah. Uh, order of the bills, item two A. A the first item is a resolution authorizing budget amendment for Parks Water. So let me get this right. Uh, for years, we were tapped into the county line and using their water. And apparently, the county found out. <laughs> and being the cheapskates that they are, they're making us pay for our own water now. That's one way to say it. <laughs> Okay, so and, and since we, we hadn't budgeted for that water, uh, we now have to budget because they're making us pay for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. And this is a transfer of 5,000 from contingent to the parks utilities water. And this is for uh, the area by the Fireman's Memorial and the gazebo. Is that correct, Jared? On the, on the, on the post road. On, on the, the post road. On the post road, yeah, right. Anybody on the board have any questions or concerns? So this is coming out of one pocket into another pocket. No, no uh, problem. All right, again, make motion. I'll second a motion, I'll get court roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The floor? Victor Victor. Heave. Mayor Murphy? Yes. Uh, the next up is a budget amendment for police reimbursement overtime. And it's moving uh, from the revenue, public safety, $195,000 uh, to appropriations, police overtime. So this is money that has come in from uh, contractors. Uh, with folks that don't know, uh, when you see Con Ed or you know, some uh, contractor digging up the road and there's a police officer there. Those contractors are paying for the police officer. So this is taking the money in. Uh, and then after we take the money and we have to transfer the money to the police overtime to make up the loss of revenue. Is that correct, Jerry? Yes. Okay. So this is, you know, yes. this is, any questions or concerns? 
<clears throat> uh, I'd like a motion, please. So moved. Second. Okay, cool. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. To four? Yes. We can't hear you. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Overseas connection must be out there. Mm -hmm. Budget amendment sold. Okay, this is taking uh, 37000 from the general fund balance and removing it to snow removal materials. And uh, the, the reason for this is that salt has gone up by $23 a ton, or 46% uh, since we last uh, looked at it. Is that correct, Jerry, in some of substance? It's gone up, uh, the exact numbers. Yeah, that's right. It's gone up. The cost now is um, $73 a ton. Um, it used to be around $50 a ton. That's correct, Mayor. Okay. Uh, so this isn't this isn't because we've had a particularly inclement winter. Yeah. No, this is the regular topping off of the existing supply that we maintain all the time in the shed. Okay, Trustee Natchez, you want to say something? No, that it just was answered. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome. Uh, question. Yeah. Uh, uh, Jerry, uh, are are we using as much salt as we uh, used to, or, or are we using more brine now? No. Um, um, Lou, brine is not a replacement uh, for salt. Brine gives us a couple of hours of response time. Yeah. Um, and so brine is mixed for us at the town of Mamaroneck. We go pick it up and apply it. Um, the, the, the amount of salt used in a brine solution is 23% uh, uh, you know, uh, of, a, of a gallon. Um, so it really isn't that much at all. It's, it's somewhat insignificant. The, the fact is that our, our, our crew is putting down brine on a regular basis this year, as opposed to other years, because we're just having more ice storms and we're trying to give ourselves a little bit more time to come in late in night or early in the morning and um, kind of right. um, prepare a little bit. But, but brine doesn't displace salt, salt in any way. Yeah, the cost of salt going up $23 is, okay. is a yeah. huge right. jump. We used, to pay, we used to pay these, number, these, these amounts uh, Four or five years ago, at least from from uh, when I was in Jersey. All right. Okay. Uh, thank you, Jer. Uh, I need a motion. So moved. Oh. So we're second. Okay. Second. Nora, Nora made the motion. Uh, Trustee Young, second. Call the roll, please. Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. To four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Uh, Next up is the abstract of audited vouchers, $909,508.20. Somebody have any questions or concerns? Glenn, go ahead. Am I still on? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the, the one I was going to ask about is we have um, fire equipment 2021. Is, is that the end of the um, fire equipment being ordered um, on, uh, that we got the uh, bond from the um, dorm authority for? Okay. It'd be all, all the way on the bottom under under uh, capital. Do um... you, you have the page number? Let me make it easier first. Uh, uh, Mr. Mayor, I, I can answer that question. We're, we're, still, okay, go ahead. we're still ordering stuff there. Like with many things, there are delays in the supply chain of being yeah. able to fill these orders. So uh, we haven't ordered everything that we are scheduled to order. And we have until, I believe, May of 2023 to spend the entire $250,000 that was uh, uh, we received as that part of that grant that Assembly Ben Otis uh, helped us secure. Yeah, good. So that's that's basically all going to be paid for by by that bond. It's just yeah. Uh, yeah. slow with the equipment. Okay, yeah, thank you. Yep, that's thanks, right. Glenn. Anybody on the board? No. Okay, I need a motion, please. So moved. Thank Second. You. Okay. Call the roll. Trustees Young. Yes. Natchez. Yes. Lucas. Yes. The four. Yes. Mayor Murphy. Aye. Okay, great. Uh, there is no old business. 
Uh, the next up, a resolution uh, execution of agreement. Uh, this is new business item 4A uh, resolution execution of agreement with Southeast Consortium. Uh, what this is, is all the towns from Port Chester, towns and villages from Port Chester to uh, Pelham have banded together and they have formed a consortium to give recreational services uh, to uh, folks with special needs. Uh, it would be very prohibitively expensive for one community, especially some of these small communities like us to do it. Uh, but we band together and do it. And actually they, they, they provide great service uh, to the folks who use this service. Uh, I've heard nothing but good things at it, at, about them. Uh, for us, it's very convenient because they're headquartered in the town of Mamaric Village, uh, and they use uh, a lot of times they will use the pavilion uh, to have programs for folks. So it works out very good for us. It's cost effective. We've been doing this for 40 years. Uh, that is that program, and we are just renewing our, our, our participation in it. So I would gladly make that motion. Second. Thank you, Nora. Uh, can we please call the roll? Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, the next up is resolution appointment of bond council. Now, what this is was we have a bond council, and the gentleman uh, who is our bond council uh, was a sole practitioner. Uh, that gentleman has now become uh, a member of a firm. So it's the same contract, the same terms, but it is just uh, moving his, uh, where, we, where we send the check to, uh, to uh, Harris, Harris Beach LLC, instead of where we used to send it to is, is uh, Mr. Jeff Storch. Uh, Mr. Storch has joined Harris Beach. So there's no impact to the taxpayers. It's just a change of address on a check. Can I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. Second. Augie, please. Trustees, Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The board? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, Ford Escape, resolution authorizing purchase of a Ford Escape SE. And I will ask my friend, Mr. Sonoff, to give a brief explanation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, we're looking to replace a vehicle in the which is a 2014 uh, Ford Focus, uh, which has had been played by transmission issues. Uh, the plan is to turn down the 2015 Chevy Equinox, which is assigned to me, to the building department, and this will replace that vehicle. Uh, and the quote is off uh, Washington County contract. Uh, and as noted in the memo, I did actually secure a second quote from another contract we can participate in. And the Washington County contract is cheaper by several hundred dollars. Okay. Uh, any questions or concerns from board members? I'd like a motion. So moved. I have a second. second. Thank you, Nora. Uh, please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Sanchez? Yes. Lucas? Yeah. Yes. The floor? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the next item resolution authorizing contract with Zenicity. Uh, we are holding off. Uh, resolution authorizing funding of upgrade to the pay stations. These are the pay stations for parking. Uh, we talked about this in work session. Uh, Jerry, you want to give a, a brief uh, update of why, why we need to do this? Sure, Mayor. Existing now, we have 15 multi-space meter pay stations throughout the village. Uh, this would upgrade the components uh, and the mechanisms, bringing them up to date, uh, uh, including, and I forgot to mention this um, in the... Uh, uh, in the work session um, discussion, but um, um, the 3G issue uh, has come up where 3G is now um, no longer 
yeah. um, available from certain carriers. So this upgrades the 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 guts uh, of the of the pay stations and brings them up to date, so that we no longer experience, for the most part, missed um, uh, fees, parking fees, because the pay stations go down so frequently um, in the uh, <clears throat> during the year, uh, especially in the summertime when we're at peak. Uh, so that's what this does. This comes out of a fund. Uh, mm -hmm. We have two hundred plus thousand dollars in that fund, two hundred and forty something thousand dollars. Great, thank you. Good use of the fund. Uh, Mr. Tippett has a question. Yeah, uh, the parking authority fund. Uh, I actually hadn't really heard about it before. Uh, how how is it funded? Uh, I I think, and uh, someone can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, when businesses open and they don't have the ability to provide uh, the requisite parking for the business. Uh, the zoning board or the planning board, I forget which, uh, will assess them a fee and they pay that fee into this fund. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome, Glenn. Um, okay, that being said and explained, anybody on the board have any questions or concerns? Okay, uh, I will make the motion. Second. Mr. Augustino. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. DeFore? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Now the next item on the agenda is not on the agenda. We I wanna add an item to the agenda and the adding item would be about uh, appointing uh, a uh, resident to the Marine Education Committee. So I, I need a motion to add an item to the agenda. So moved. So second. Okay. Uh, Nora, first, Dan, second. Uh, oh, we call the roll for that. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. The four? Yes. Mayor Murphy? Aye. Uh, the person we're adding is a, a, a resident named Elizabeth Selden. Uh, she seems very eager and uh, has a lot of experience in education, so it, it, it will probably be a very nice fit. Uh, so I will make the motion to appoint Ms. Selvin to uh, the Marine Education Advisory Committee. Second. Please call the roll. Trustees Young? Yes. Natchez? Yes. Lucas? Yes. DeFore? Yes. Mayor Murphy. I want to thank Trustee Tafour for bringing this to the forefront and uh, for trying to get that committee back on its feet. And I vote yes. All right, communication to the board round two. And guess it's Glenn. Hey. <laughs> hey, Glenn, how are you doing? Uh, you were uh, discussing at the um, during the work session about uh, the conditions of the rivers and everything. Um, we just, we used to have the environmental cleanup days and unfortunately COVID kind of got, got, um, that canceled and, you know, just, you know, so all, all the new trustees know, uh, that would be a good one to bring back. And what would happen is we would have all different volunteer groups come and clean the beach and all the different rivers in the, in the village. And then what the village would do is they would have uh, staff help with equipment, actually, you know, go into where, you know, some, some of the people couldn't go, supply all kinds of garbage bags and uh, support staff. And they would have a Saturday where virtually they'd go through and clean up all the rivers mm -hmm. and streams. Unfortunately, because of COVID, it's been canceled for the last couple of years, but perhaps this spring uh, that could be brought back. I, I think we did it last year, Glenn. And it's been rescheduled. Right. We, we were on the uh, environmental committee talking about it uh, last week. So it's been scheduled again. I, I can't give you the date off the top of my head. But we did do it last year. Yeah, and that 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 usually is a um, a great day where they really get, you know, all the garbage and everything out of the rivers. Uh, yeah, right. okay. fi finally, you know, everybody, it, it's been a long couple of years. You know, it's been it's been exhausting. Um, you guys have done a great job. 
He says, I, I know I, I stay on top of you on a lot of subjects and everything, you know, but you know what? I, I don't challenge the stupid. I challenge those who have high intelligence and I expect, you know, that, you know, they can give me the answers that I'm looking for. And everyone has come through time after time. And, you know, sometimes I could be long winded like now. But I do thank you for your patience, no. and, and thank, and, and 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 thank you. You know, we are probably more transparent right now. Augie has done fantastic work. We are more transparent thank as you. a village right now than we ever have been in the history of this village, and you are doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you, Glenn. It's very sweet of you to say. And, and I and I agree with you, Mayor, especially about our staff. Mayor, I have something for Glenn. Glenn? For Glenn, I think. For oh, Glenn. Okay. Glenn, uh, earlier this evening, I sent the board an email uh, asking for anyone's relevant historical knowledge of a crossing in front of Walter's hot dogs. Do you remember one? I, I do. Yeah, there, there was always there was always a um, a uh, school crossing uh, in front of Walter's. Uh, usually right where that, uh, right where the, um, the telephone pole was Yes. Okay. Go, going diagonally across. Uh, I can add to that, uh, uh, Jerry. Um, I think the crossing was, uh, was painted after there was a, uh, incident where a, a child was uh, hit and killed by a car. That is exactly right. Does anyone recall um, ADA ramps at that location? Because that's the requirement now. Maybe not. No. They probably weren't. No, but, uh, back no. Then no not back place. then. Okay. No. Okay. No, but 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 it can, you can put. There is a driveway that's not used that is now blocked off, except for emergencies. That on the Walter side, and I believe uh, so. You would only have to cut one side on the uh, school. So, so the, the specs for ADA ramps are, are somewhat detailed right now. That would be a good idea, but that could be a location where we where we do that. So I appreciate that. But I will uh, I will discuss this with the county since uh, Palmer, um, you know, runs a bus. And, 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 and Jerry, um, the question about Walters was that profiling in any way, shape, or form? No, no, no. I just <laughs> you, you and I, you and I had a conversation at that location about the signs. No, no, Jerry, I was only kidding you. I was only kidding. I know you. you're kidding me. I know you're kidding me. <laughs> you, you know, when I go to Walters and they say, "How long have you uh, been going to Walters?" I put my hands uh, like I'm clapping, and I go, "The first time I went to Walters, I was this wide." <laughs> <laughs> Jerry, I, I can give you more background on that when we're offline. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. Thank uh, you. Jerry, I have something for you. A quick quick question. Can you give us, can you send us a uh, timeline on uh, the implementation of the city? And we still haven't gotten it. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, I may have that in my email. I'll look for that right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, report from the village manager. Uh, Mayor, the only thing that I have to report is earlier today, the building inspector and I met with Randy Martinez, the executive director of the Community Resource Center, and Mr. Len Aubrey. Uh, and we looked at what will be the next um, phase of the CRC, and it's extremely encouraging. A lot of what they're doing um, will be expanded to continue their good work. And um, the renovations due to the <clears throat> Hurricane Ida will be extensive, especially since they're trying to, for lack of a better term, almost flood proof the basement at the CRC. Um, but uh, with Westcop moving out of there and the ability for them to expand uh, in that facility for more offices, more worker development, um, more areas where they can serve their clients. Um, the price tag is, is up there pretty good. So um, it's a very worthwhile cause and an extremely um, beneficial um, 
nonprofit in our community, and I just wanted to give them a plug and wish them the best as they rebuild that uh, that facility. They've got a lot of work to do. Um, I, I agree with you wholeheartedly. They're they're our partner in many many ways. Yep, they are. Uh, other than that, I have two items uh, to file for the record. One is the supplemental agreement uh, for Hillside Avenue Bridge with um, the DOT, and the other is the agreement for the um, work, the design uh, work for Halstead Avenue uh, Roadway Restoration. Great. That's it. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Clerk Treasurer. Yes, Mayor. We have residential and non-residential railroad parking permits uh, expiring on February 28th. The sale for new permits will start March 1st, tomorrow. We've asked the police department to give a two-week grace period for people to come in and buy them. Uh, the second item is that we have a tackling sale on Wednesday, March 9th at 10 a.m. in the courtroom. Uh, you can pay taxes until 4.30 p.m. on Tuesday, March 8th. Well, thank you. The last item is... I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, Looking through me. No. <laughs> <What's that? laughs> we have a notice of defect um, from a resident. On the east side of Jefferson Avenue, near the car wash, there has been a gurgling of water coming up through the sidewalk that appears to be active 24 seven for at least the past month. This was noted for the record. Thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Village Attorney. Uh, just to report, Mayor, that Local Law 2 of 2022, which dealt with residency requirements, was filed with the Secretary of State and became effective on February 3rd of 2022. Right. Thank you very much, Bob. Uh, minutes of commissions, boards and committees, uh, minutes of the board of trustees work session and regular meeting of February 14th, 2020. Minutes of the flood advisory committee on December 28th, 2021. Minutes of the committee for the environment meeting of January 18th, 2022. Uh, minutes of the board of traffic commissioners meeting on December 15th, 2021. Uh, before I adjourn tonight, uh, I just want to uh, point out that there is a, a, a very tragic uh, event happening in the world in the Ukraine. Uh, the, as I'm sure most people know that the Ukrainian state was attacked by Russia. Uh, the folks in Ukraine are uh, really teaching us you know what the value of freedom is and they're teaching us about bravery and sacrifice and patriotism you know every morning i get up and i look at my news feed and uh, i see that kiev is still uh, in ukrainian hands and i know that it gives me hope that there are people in this world that are willing to fight and willing to die and willing to sacrifice for their freedom and their fight is our fight. And I think, you know, we, we, we've, we've had too many people screaming about uh, taking their freedom away because they have to wear a piece of cloth on their face. And we have people who are really uh, fighting uh, to maintain democracy. And uh, I wish them all the luck in the world. And I'm glad that we are doing everything in our power short of sending troops uh, to help them. Uh, God bless them all, and uh, I, I hope that they uh, they survive what they have to go through. So I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Have a good night, everybody. Bye. Okay.